It was Sioux Falls, South Dakota's turn. Both teams are here this year. Who will leave hoisting the trophy? Who will leave the winners of the Rumble on the River 12? We are live in Savannah, Tennessee next for the NAIA National Championship. Tennessee. It's been raining since 6 o'clock this morning, but that doesn't matter. It's number one versus number two. Sioux Falls and Carroll fighting it out today for the NAIA National Championship. Hello once again, everybody. I'm the coach, Jonathan Coachman, and my partner, Roland Williams. Come right in, pal. we got to get right to it. This is the way it's supposed to be, number one versus number two. Throughout the weather, throughout the travel, there's a whole lot on the line today. Yeah, competing for a championship is one of the most cherished occasions in sport, no matter what the weather. And both teams involved in today's matchup are no stranger to being on top of the NAI universe. You know, college, Carroll College won the last four or five championships. And also, you come with Sioux Falls, the returning champions. They're used to winning, and they want to create a healthy habit of taking that trophy home to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Well, something's got to give this afternoon. Sioux Falls, they come in with an offense that is very, very prolific. Yeah, offense is simply amazing. They're averaging over 46 points a game, and they get after it. The head coach and offensive coordinator, Caleb DeBoer, has a luxury no one else has in senior quarterback Chad Cavender. This guy is amazing. He's a hedgy player, gets the ball around to his quartet of awesome receivers, including senior wide receiver Trey Erickson, and my fair position, senior tight end Josiah Fritzroy. I love him. On the other side, Carroll College, nobody, and I repeat, nobody, has been able to score on them this entire season. Yeah, that defense is pretty darn stingy. They, that's what makes this game must-see TV. Carroll College comes to this game giving up a frugal 5.1 points a game. And how do they do it? Because they know how to get after the quarterback. Carroll College leaves college football again in stacks with 62 and a half. And the biggest contributor, a tremendous defensive player, Phil Lanou, with 10 and a half sacks. They get after it, they play fast, and they play physical. Someone's going to leave wet, but somebody's going to leave a national champion. The Rumble on the River 12. You know what it is. Kickoff is next. Extreme power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. At work, I wear black. My old dandruff shampoo wasn't working, so I switched. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended for flakes and itch. Never wear black without the blue. Selsun Blue. For ultimate daily care, try Selsun Blue Salon. This holiday, gear up your favorite sports fan at fanstore.com. Enter MyCSTV, all lowercase, for free shipping on orders over $75. Go to fanstore.com. to go pro in something other than sports. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 380,000 NCAA student-athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. CSTV's Football Nation, the NAIA National Championship, is brought to you by B.F. Goodrich. B.F. Goodrich Tires, take control. And by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. 
It may be sloppy, but it's going to be fun. The NAIA title online. Welcome to Jim Carroll Stadium here in Hardin County, Tennessee. And uh, there is not a more fun day of the year for us here at CSTV than this right here. We're just about to set for kickoff. Zach Theory will kick off for Carroll. Trey Erickson and Christian Prospery will uh, gather it in for Sioux Falls, the number one seed. They've been number one all year long and hope to finish things off today. Erickson will take it at his seven, go up the far side. Good blocking out past the 25 out to the 27, and that's where Sioux Falls and their national player of the year will start this game, Chad Cavender. Chad Cavender is a special guy, and what makes him special is that he's an accurate passer, he makes good decisions, and he gives them a chance to win. He has great feet, and he has some awesome, I mean awesome playmakers on that side of the ball. You're going to see a lot of different formations. A lot of different uh, offensive uh, thought processes when you come to Sioux Falls. The head coach, Kalen DeBoer, uh, is also the offensive coordinator, and uh, he really likes to get, uh, he takes chances. I'll put it that way, and hopefully you see that this afternoon despite the weather. So first and ten for Sioux Falls. Here comes Kavner using his feet. He's going to keep it. And good speed out past the 30 and pushed out of bounds at the 31. And let's take a look at the starting offense for Sioux Falls. Yeah, when you look at these playmakers up front, they have a host of guys, a lot of seniors. Blake Leeson on one side, Cameron Orton on the other side. All big offensive line giving them a chance to be successful. Also, when you look at the running back, this is simple, number 22, watch him. But we talked about Joseph, Josiah Fitzroy. This guy is a playmaker at number 41, Trey Erickson. He's their deep play, deep playmaker down the field. Yeah, number 81, Fitzroy, when he talked to Coach Mike Van Deep from Carroll, he thinks he has a chance to play on Sunday. So he'll be uh, on display today. The first pass a little bit short, so it'll bring up a third down and long. Let's take a look at the Carroll defense that we previewed uh, in the open. Well, this defense is stingy, and it starts up front. Phil, Phil Lanou, this guy gets after it up front. These two, these defensive linemen are special. In the secondary, the linebackers are guys that are, are have blossomed as the season went on, and look for them as a whole. Their playmakers are big, and they can cover. In the secondary, look for Nick Milo Dragovich. This guy is a player, playmaker nicknamed Milo. That guy is the man. And I think that's what we're going to call him throughout the day. Otherwise, I'll just butcher his name the entire game. I'm impressed by you. You got, you know, it right first. And nowhere to go. That time the Carroll defense stuffed the third down play. And just like that, three and out for Sioux Falls in the first punting situation, probably the first of many this afternoon. Well, what you, what you see is that this is an offense that's used to scoring a lot of points. And when you get the weather out there, the mud is slippery. You can't be as aggressive in your play calling. You saw some, some conservative plays, some simple plays, and that's no match for a defense that moves as fast as the guys do over on Carroll's side. Drew Anderson in the punt for Sioux Falls. Back to receive is Milo Dragovich. He uh, returns punts as well as kicks for Carroll. A wobbly kick lands at the 42 and goes dead in the water at the 37. And that will bring onto the field John Barnett, who is a very efficient quarterback. And they really spread it around and like to get it done on the ground and also in the air. Yeah, when you have a strong defense, all you need is your offense to do is just complement what you're doing. They don't have to do anything super fancy, and they're a very balanced attack. You know, we talked to the coach, and the coach said, hey, John Barnett's a guy that, that makes good decisions. You know, he's a guy that's fought through injuries and various things, but he's a playmaker that, that can get the job done and complement the strength of our team, which is our defense. Gabe Lee is the starting running back in the backfield with Barnett. He gets the first call off the right side. Good block. And finally take it down to the 41, and let's take a look at the Carroll offense. Yeah, when you look up front, you know, there's some leadership at the right tackle position, number 76, Scott Holbrook. He's a playmaker. He's a playmaker over there. You know, that offensive line as a whole, again, just doing a good enough job to complement that defense, but they're moving the ball. You know, you look at their backs and receivers. They have guys, number 20, Gabe Lee is a guy that's not there, but he's going to play a lot. John Herring, these playmakers, again, a very inclusive offense. Everybody gets the ball. Yeah, a lot of guys come in and out. There'll be a lot of substituting for Carroll, and I would have to think that because of the weather, you'd have to give the advantage to Carroll College. They have four running backs that have over 400 yards rushing on the season. That time, nowhere for Gabe Lee 
for him to go, and that'll bring him a third down and seven for Carroll College. Would you agree that they would have the advantage because they get more done on the ground? Absolutely, and right now, when you look at this in the weather, this, this is a big X factor that's going to play a role in this game all game long. Defensively, you're licking your chops. If you're a defensive player and you're playing in the mud, the offensive players can't make the cuts. The receivers can't run the routes at Chris. This is really an advantage to both sides of the ball defensively. Three wideouts. One in motion, third down, and about seven for Barnett. Back to pass, still on his feet. He drops the ball, it's on the ground. It looks like it's recovered by Sioux Falls, and it is. And there you see the first time the weather has played a factor. It just went right out of the hands of the quarterback. Turnover, Sioux Falls now in business. Yeah, you know, that's something that, that you really can't even prepare for a pregame. That's just simply the ball being too slippery for a guy's hands. I haven't looked at his hands, so I don't know how big they are, but obviously it wasn't big enough to hold onto that ball, and that's just a gift for Sioux Falls. Jeremy Barnes, number 18, with the recovery, and so Sioux Falls and Chad Cavender will take over deep in Carroll College territory at the 29, and we thought that turnovers would play a role. you got to hang on to the ball, and... Uh, here early in the first quarter, Sioux Falls has an opportunity. Cavender, handoff to the near side inside the 25. Good pickup on first down of about five for Eric Simple. You know, Simple's a guy that leads the team in rushing, you know, with, with 5.6 yards of carry. This guy is, is somebody that hasn't had been the horse because this offense is just so prolific. They've been passing the ball, but now in this weather, look for Simple to get involved early and often in this football game. Simple over 1,000 yards rushing on the year, and also Ryan Miller has over 600 yards. He'll get uh, several carries this afternoon as well. So second down in about six. For Sioux Falls after the turnover by Carroll and quarterback Josh Barnett. Handoff, simple again, down to the 20. And this is exactly where both teams want to be this afternoon. In this type of weather, this type of situation, row. you want to have third down and one, third down and two. That's where you want to be in the offensive lineman, that right side of the ball, T.J. Went, Cameron Horton, that right tackle. You know, they just knocked people off the ball in that last play. And this weather plays to the defense, but also for the big offensive lineman, they get a chance to tee off and hit somebody in the mouth in this kind of weather. So that's pretty nice for them, too. Yeah, I apologize. I said Josh Barnett. It's John Barnett for, uh, for Carroll. So his parents are watching at home. I apologize. Third down and short. Man in motion, handoff again to Simple. This time, stuck, and the ball is on the ground, and Carroll College is saying that they have recovered the big-time hit, and another turnover, and Carroll College dodges a bullet. The second turnover of the game, one each. For, for each team now. Well, that was a playmaker looked like by number 51, Owen Keppen. You know, he came up in there like a like a grown man. Guys were coming in. The secondary was involved. Folks were coming, and it was just a tough, jarring hit. And when the weather is bad, balls slip out. You know, you see him trying to hit up in here. That's just a form-fitting tackle. That's just, boy, that would make Ryan Erlacher proud. You know? A big hit by number 51, Owen Copen, and recovered that time by number 8, Cody Zimmerman. And so now Carroll will take over John Barnett back onto the field at their own 18. And that may be the theme of the day. Hand off to Gabe Lee. A couple of yards. And I don't know what the uh, the record is for turnovers, but we may look that up early because today with the way things are, folks, you, you have to be here to really see how bad it is. You can see on TV, but it's been raining for a good six hours, seven hours, and uh, it's, it's just going to get worse. Yeah, you see everybody on the sideline. You can't see them, but every skill position on both sides of the ball, they're dried off their hands now, towels are out. Everybody's putting on all the extra grease right now. This is slippery uh, Saturday. Second down and five. Lee gets the call again. This time wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Brandon Polstra. A loss on the play will bring up third down and long. You know, this is just a good play defensively. When you can get through that line of scrimmage and you see those holes start disappearing, if you're a running back, when there's no place to go, you see purple in every single gap, all you can do is lay down. Tremendous play of getting inside. And again, maximizing that weather, you get a chance to get inside. Offensive linemen are not moving as fast. Tremendous play. 
Now we're approaching the 10-minute mark here in the first quarter. Roland Williams, I'm Jonathan Coachman. Our entire CSTV crew, happy holidays, everybody. And so pleased you could join us here uh, for the last game of the year in the NAIA division. And it's always a fun, fun day. Today, it's a sloppy one. Barnett breaks the coverage, but doesn't get enough for the first down. He's going to be taken down at the 25. Great pursuit by the Sioux Falls defense, and Carroll will be forced to punt. You know, this is, this is the early part of the game. You know, everybody's going through that mode of adjusting and, get, and getting familiar with each other. You know, we're doing it up here in the booth. You know, this is what it's about, a championship game. You're evaluating who you're up against. Defensively right now, there's some, some, some interesting things happening up front. So Zach Theory is in the punt, and Troy Erickson is back to receive for Sioux Falls standing at his own 30. Punt, a good punt into the win. And the ball is down on the ground, fumbled, and another turnover. Carroll College has it again at the Sioux Falls 25. Erickson couldn't bring it in, and Carroll College now, they're in business, and the tide continues to turn, and we're only six minutes into this game. <laughs> This, this is funny, man. This is remind you like a little slip and slide out here. You know, we got we got Erickson, who's, who's very, very reliable as a return man. You know, he's one of the most prolific returners in the conference. So, you know, there has to be an issue there. And it's not his hands. I think that weather is really factoring in. I, I'm looking for him to try to get a towel and do something else and rub himself down. You got to hold on to that football, man. Yeah, Erickson was averaging uh, 12 yards a return this year. A, a sure-handed uh, Running back and also returner for Sioux Falls, but that time he muffed the punt, the second turnover in just a couple of minutes for Sioux Falls. And so now Barnett and his offense back out on the field. Handoff to the far side, a couple of yards. First carry by Sean Heron, who we'll see a lot of this afternoon. And how important is it, Roe, in a game like this? I know you played at Syracuse and also at St. Louis inside Dome, but have you ever played in a, a situation like this? Well, it's tough, you know, when you, when you play, you used to play in on turf, or you used to play in domes. You know, you do have to have some adjustment playing in this kind of weather. You know, when you, when you think about Carroll College, obviously they play a little bit more out with Sioux Falls. You know, we'll talk about that later. They don't play that much on the grass. So it was a big adjustment for them, but mud makes it neutral for everybody. Whistle blows and a flag flies. Everything uh, today. Number 61, offense, five <laughs> yards, repeat second down. Well, there you saw, as you heard the uh, referee call the uh, penalty. Barnett having a hard time keeping his mouthpiece in. And uh, is there a five-second rule like food? If you drop it <laughs> on the ground, you're allowed to put it back in. I'm not sure. Well, I think it's, it's, it's actually a day rule. I mean, in football, you can pick up your mouthpiece and put that in your mouth anytime. It's pretty disgusting, but it's okay. I guess by the end of the day, everything's going to be dirty, so it doesn't matter. So back it up five. It'll bring second down and uh, 14. Handoff to Lee. He hit, breaks a couple of tackles, and down the far side, he may have enough for the first down. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but broke those tackles and a big gain for Gabe Lee, and we'll see where they mark him out at. He may have enough for a first down. Well, well this run was, was purely an individual effort. You know, he had a little blocking, but he really showed us a lot himself, you know, lowering and dropping the boom. And when we talked to the coach, you know, we talked to the to coach. He said that, hey, Gabe has had the, the hot hand lately. You know, he's been a pleasant surprise. You know, he's he's a backup, but right now they've been giving him 20, 25 carries a game. He's been the person. You know, Sean Heron has been hurt and injured, and, and Gabe has just been picking up and doing some big things. So look for him to get the ball some more this game. 14 yards on that last carry, just enough for a first down. So the market at the 15, and the first serious threat for Carroll here in this uh, in the ball game so far. Barnett the pass. He's got a man wide open, but he just let his running back a little bit too far. If he would have hit him an easy touchdown, the misdirection, but instead incomplete second down. Well, that one right there, offensive coordinator Nick Howlett now is looking and seeing something and saying, "Aha, aha! I have Pursuit. something that's open." He was wide open. It would have been a touchdown, but again, a, a throw. John Barnett wants back. He wished he could have hit him, and he would have been up 7-0. Uh, it's going to be very difficult, obviously, to throw the football this afternoon, but they're going to continue to try and run their offense. We talked to Kalen DeBoer uh, last night, and uh, he said we're going to run our, the normal offense that we always run, 
And uh, until we feel like we can't run it anymore, then we'll have to make that adjustment. So second down and 10. Barnett back to pass again. He's got plenty of time. He's got a man in the end zone and overthrows his intended wide receiver, number six, Travis Brown. So that'll bring up a third down and 10. Well, it seems like to me, you know, Carroll seems like they're the ones that are trying to be opportunistic passing the ball. You know, we talked about Sioux Falls and them sticking to their game plan. Their game plan is to throw the ball. And what we saw in their earlier series was a lot of running the ball, more conservative, more simple offense. Right now, Carroll is, is saying, hey, why not take a shot? You know, take a shot downfield and hopefully get some points. If Carroll cannot convert here on third, the other big part of this game, the kicking game, will come into play. And we'll see how the weather will affect that. But four wide outs for Carroll, one in motion. A handoff to Heron around the far side. He's hit at the 10 and taken down about eight yards on the carry as there was a good push by the offensive line and it's decision time now for Mike Van Deest. It's gonna be fourth down and about two from where I'm standing. And it looks like the offense is gonna stay on the field and they're gonna go for it. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. We know Coach Van Deese is a guy that's not afraid to take chances. He's been that way. That's why he's been so successful. And rushing the ball, they have to feel good about themselves. I'm, I'm looking to see uh, number 20, Gabe Lee, get the football and hit it up in there. Well, the play clock is already down to 10, down to 9, 8, 7. Uh, they're going to have to take a timeout. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to get this playoff, and that's indeed uh, what they're going to do. So we're going to take a break with them. When we come back, the first big fourth down of this game. We're just getting started here in Savannah. Life is hectic. Playtime shouldn't be. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let the pace move you. Hardin County, Tennessee. From golfing to water sports to museums, Hardin County has it all. Come to a place where Southern hospitality is more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. For more information about Hardin County, call 1-800-552-FUNN. That's 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. At a time when sports are heading in the wrong direction, the NAIA is changing the culture of sport. Through the Champions of Character program, our college students are learning character traits that change behaviors. And they're bringing the message to coaches, parents, and teams nationwide. Visit NAIA.org and learn how your team can become Champions of Character. I've played a lot of stages over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a great time, day or night, Tennessee. There's no end to the beauty, music, and adventure starring in Tennessee. For an unforgettable vacation or weekend getaway any time of the year, we've got the perfect stage for you. Uh, let's pick it up a little bit, honey. There's all kinds of things to do in Tennessee, but next time, let's take the pink Cadillac. Call or click for your free Tennessee vacation guide. So after the timeout, Coach Mike Van Deese has changed his mind and has sent the field goal unit on Marcus Miller. His first attempt of the afternoon, a 25-yard attempt from the left hash. Snap is high, but it's down. The kick is up. And no problem there. So Carroll College, after the muffed punt by Trey Erickson, gets on the board first with 7.05 remaining here in the first quarter. Carroll 3 Sioux Falls, nothing. Well, something that makes that also special, Marcus Miller, the, the, the kicker, is also the starting defensive back. So he's the kind of guy that's a playmaker. You call him Slash. He just puts points on the board. There's actually a game early in the season where he had every point of the entire game. So he, do, he gets it done offensively, and he's not afraid to step up and hit you in the mouth as a defensive back. So, Ro, we talked about the, the, the start, that turnovers would be an issue. And... We will talk about that in a moment. Right now, we got to take another quick break. 7.05 remaining. Carroll, first on the board. They lead by three. You know what? You've earned this. Never fly from Spalding, true to the game.
There will come a day when you'll wonder. You'll think back to how you used to listen. Before you heard your music, your sports, your talk. All from the same place. And you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. Serious. Everything else falls short. Over 130 channels. Only one place to get it all. Serious Satellite Radio. So a 25-yard field goal by Miller and Carroll after a couple of turnovers in the same series uh, by Sioux Falls. Uh, gets on top three now, then 7.05 remaining here in the NAIA National Championship game. The Rumble on the River 12. So Theory puts his foot, in, foot into it. It comes down to Erickson this time, no problem. Gathering it in, he takes it to the far side, and he has taken down just past the 30 to the 32 so now obviously players have already had a problem holding on to the football what adjustments do you make so as you go forward in the game that doesn't happen well you know as an offensive player you know this is the one of the kinds you got to think about the six points of the football you know there's six points you got to put pressure on to keep it snug to your body if you're an offensive player you got to focus on those you got to go back to the pop water days and just stay focused and keep track of that football so, number 11, Chad Kavanagh, and there you see head coach Kalen DeBoer in his third season at Sioux Falls, and I would dare say nobody's had a better start in a coaching career than him. And a long pass down the near sideline, no flag, and it looked like there was a lot of contact intended for his stud wide receiver fence roy but it falls incomplete second down that would be a tight end that spectacular position that was a good matchup right there we've been talking about this matchup number 22 nick maladragovich this guy versus josiah fence roy is a matchup you're going to keep track of all game josiah is a guy that as he goes so does the offense go and again this is a passing offense that as you see they're not really throwing the football. This is a spread you out, throw the right. ball kind of offense, and you're seeing fundamentals, ABC offense. This is the weather taking effect. And they love to use Cavender's legs in this offense, and they're going to need him today. Here you go, right from the shotgun. He ducks under, gets up past the 35, and up to about the 38. So, again, third down and long. And this has been here in the first quarter. They've had a lot of third down and longs. And you can't be in this situation in this type of weather. No, especially if you're an offense that's used to the passing the ball. You know, when we sat and talked with the coach, you know, Coach DeBoer, he said their offensive theme is to spread the ball out, pass it first to set the run up, which sets up the play action. Now, here in this game, they're a little bit out of sync. They're, they're trying to run the ball to set up the pass and everything. This is not the kind of offense they love to run. Let's see them convert in this third down. Third and five. Kavner under center. Out to the near side, intended for Erickson. The pass overthrown, and again, three and out, and Sioux Falls will be forced to punt. But this is really, you know, the last game that they played against Missouri Valley, they went 99 yards on their last drive, converting a fourth and 12 along the way to win 11 to 10. So they know how to play it ugly. Yeah. So, you know, even though they're averaging 46 points a game, they can still win a game like this. Yeah, and, and the coach said that's something they didn't like. I don't, don't think right. that's what they like, but they said it did add some more character to their belt. They know they can hang in a game just because they don't have early success like they're used to. They still believe they can win. And right now it's going to take some, some adjustments offensively. The punt just dies at the 35 in a puddle. And so Carroll will take over there. Up by three. And I don't know how many long drives we're going to see the uh, this afternoon. It may be more along uh, the lines of uh, utilizing those turnovers. We'll take another quick break. Carroll College is by three here in the first. Hardin County is one of the fastest growing counties in Tennessee. Companies like Tenneco have chosen to operate in Hardin County because of offerings such as above-par educational programs, delivery to 76% of the U.S. market within one day, and a pro-business climate created by the local governments. These are just a few of the reasons Hardin County is a wonderful place to call home. To find out more about Hardin County, call Team Hardin County at 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. 
Grandpa sure will be excited. It's been a long time since you and Aunt Marcia have been here. Me and my dad go fishing there a lot. That's the high school where my brother plays football. And that's the Harley Medical Center where they are taking real good care of my grandpa. And that's Dr. Good. He delivered my baby sister. Come on, Joey. Let's go see Grandpa. Harden Medical Center. Quality care right here at home. Proud sponsor of the NAIA Championship Game. And we are back in a soggy Savannah, Tennessee. Rumble on the River 12. First quarter, Carroll on top by a field goal. And they take over at their own 35. Barnett keeps it. And he tosses it to his fullback coming out of the backfield. Bubba Bartlett. And those are the type of passes you're going to see completed. Good for nine yards. It'll bring up second down and one. <laughs> you know, John took took a page out of, out of something that Chad Cavender would do. You know, he, he got out to the outside, used his feet a little bit, and at the perfect time gave a nice little toss to his, his fullback, get him involved. Fullback rumbles up. You know, that that's just fundamental football, but that stuff looks like a, a, a beautiful magistration of offense. Up until that last uh, completion, In the both quarterbacks uh, were over. That yeah. was the first completion of the afternoon. Scavender yeah. uh, <laughs> was over three. <laughs> hey, we, we, got, we got a referee injury over here. We have a uh, on the far side. I think one of the referees just got lambasted. Hit. Let's take a look at it one more time and uh, see what exactly happened. I think if you watch the up, upper left panel of your screen, you see him up there. He's laying out there in the mud. I think he just bumped into a camera guy or something up there. It's got pretty physical. Um, no helmets on for those guys. So 535 remaining here in the first as they work on uh, one of the, uh, the media photographers here on the uh, the sidelines. <laughs> he knows he watched the camera. That, he made, made sure is, his camera was good. Yeah, that's That's something you don't normally see. Not so far away from the ball either. You know, that's that's the part that made it unique to me. Looks like both of them took uh, took the brunt of the hit, but the photographer is up and the uh, the referee is up. Or the official rather is up, and we'll see if he's able to stay in the ball game. You know, you know when I, when I think about it, you know, it's like why don't we get more referees actually wear some padding? Maybe get the photographers to wear some kind of, you know, help, you know, something. I don't know. I might sign a petition or something. I want guys to be protected. Everybody be be safe out there in the field. It's a violent game. So they're going to uh, take the uh, side judge off, and uh, we went over this last night. Actually, in the officials' meeting, they will go ahead and go with with six if uh, if. One of the officials got hurt. Uh, I don't think they imagined that it would happen in that fashion, but it did. So uh, now we continue with six officials. That was the side judge, Robert Blatcher. And hopefully uh, he can make a comeback. But now second down and one as we get back to action and the clock starts. And we are at five and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Barnett from the shotgun. Hands it off to Gabe Lee. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage, but the surge gets him at past the 45 and enough for a first down. And really, the way they run that, that uh, the offense from the shotgun in this type of weather really gives them a, uh, an added advantage because they kind of pick and choose their holes, and the defense can't move as quickly towards the, the ball carrier. No, and with an offense that that's balanced the way Carroll's offense is, you know, again, the weather does play a big factor because when you look in their playbook, you know, Nick Howlett doesn't have the big spread offense like, like Sioux Falls does. So the offense that he runs is simple, and it works whether the weather is nice or the weather's nasty. 
First down and 10 at the 45 of Carroll. Barnett back to pass, completes the wide receiver screen to number six, Travis Brown. But great pursuit that time by the Sioux Falls defense. And a lot of people have not been talking about how good that Sioux Falls defense is because of Carroll dominating nationally all year. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we talked with the defensive coordinator, Chuck Morrell, and, and obviously when you look at the statistics, those guys are second in almost every category. You know, you see Carroll's first, they're second. So that defense all week, you know, I think they got a little chip on their shoulder. They want to come and make plays. They want to come and show that they're a defense to be reckoned with as well. Right now, both defenses are really doing their part of the bargain. So second down at about 13. And the handoff and nowhere for him to go that time. Wrapped up in the backfield by big number 95, Dan Moe, a 6'4", 275-pound senior from Peterson, Minnesota. One more look. Well, these defensive linemen, you know, we talked to the coach, and he's they're the strength of the team. This defensive line, they're all seniors. They get after it. They play with great motors. They get underneath the pass. They're not afraid to play the run, and they get after it consistently with, with big motors. So this senior crew is the heart and soul of that defense up front, and that was an impressive play to, to, to set up a third down to give them something to convert. In the last two plays, Carroll has minus five yards, so this is a, a, a situation they do not want to be in. Third down and 15. They need to get all the way down to the 45 of Sioux Falls for a first down. Barnett back to pass. He's got plenty of time. He's got a man open in the flat. It's complete. But again, a loss of yardage on the play. It's completed that time. The number 33. That's Sean Heron out of the backfield. And Carroll will be forced to punt. I think that was a great defensive series. Chuck Morrell will be proud of his defense. They came, they stepped up, they were in the right place, led by the defensive lineman up front, putting a little pressure on. But again, the weather playing a factor. Defenses can get to the people faster because offensive players cannot move as fast. Erickson back to receive the punt. Remember the last punt, he muffed, and that led to Carroll's first points of the game. So a good punt by Theory. Erickson takes it at the 20. Breaks a couple of tackles, but is finally taken down at the 24. And we will keep it right here. And Cavender, who has pretty much been shut out here in the first quarter, uh, trying to get something going here in this uh, in this series. Yeah, it's a reason why he's the player of the year in the NAIA because he's a great competitor. And if I'm I'm thinking if I'm him right now, he's like, okay, I came out here a few times, been a little muddy, couldn't get the things I want going, but now it's time to settle down and be the number one ranked team in the conference and get this offense going. So Cavender under center, simple behind him. He gets the handoff. Good yardage up near the 30-yard line on first down. And you got to give credit to uh, Theory from Carroll. His last punt, 43 yards. And uh, he's done a good job in the muddy conditions of really giving. It's all about field position in this game. He's really turned the tables uh, on where Sioux Falls is, is taking the ball over from. And if they're going to score, they're going to have to go 80, 85 yards every time thus far. A lot of these running plays, too, are, are, are not going north and south. They're going east and west. And uh, when, when you have an offense that's used to getting the ball downfield with a spread offense, used to passing the ball, now they're forced to run the ball. This is an uncomfortable position. They run a lot of those runs. They're going east and west. Number nine, offense, five yards, still second down. They run these balls east and west. And whatever you're playing against a strong defense like Carroll College, they get a chance to spread out. They get a chance to shut them down. It's going to be difficult for them to run the ball. They need to start hitting it up inside and running between those tackles and trying to get some of those tough yardage. So after the penalty on Sioux Falls, backs it up five. Three second down and 11 for Cavender. And Ryan Miller now is in the... Sioux Falls backfield for the first time. Cavender and the ball on the ground. And again, Cavender is just forced to fall on it. And the weather playing a significant factor is going to bring up a third down and long after another fumble by the Sioux Falls quarterback. 
you know, the quarterback center and change is one that, that always, you know, you're supposed to rely on. That time, I think the center, Brad Moak, did a good job of getting the ball. The wetness, the slipperiness, Chad couldn't get his hands on it. And, again, he's out. I'm, I'm seeing those sleeves on his arm. You know, those might start factoring in later. you, you got to start thinking about everything you can do to hold on to that football and give yourself a chance to be successful. Will Hamilton was a man that was right on the spot after the fumble by Cavender, allowing him to go nowhere. Third down and long. And this time, Cavender straight up the middle, and little or no gain that time. And again, Sioux Falls, the offense here in the first quarter, has done absolutely nothing, and they will be forced to punt. And Carroll should get pretty good field position, uh, depending on this punt. But uh, they have backed Sioux Falls up, and, and Carroll has been the much more aggressive team thus far. Yeah, and offensively, that, that last play showed us sort of the feeling of, of head coach, offensive coordinator, Kalen DeBoer, and also Curtis Briggs, the quarterback coach. That was a third down and long, and they chose to do a quarterback draw when it's an obvious passing situation. They didn't, even though they have this prolific offense, that really lets you know they feel uncomfortable with the weather and that they, they can't run the plays they like to run. A wobbly punt, and two falls things that touch a Carroll player but it did not it's going to be down to the 38 there is a flag down on the play and we'll see what that is but that time the punt fell at the 38 we'll hear what the call is so there is no flag on the play and as we take some different shots and as this game goes along the conditions row are, are just going to get a lot worse uh, they're already bad but uh, by the time the third or fourth quarter goes around and playing on this field uh, it's, it's gonna be tough sled yeah you can't do anything that's really elusive you know you got guys like Chad Cavender that's guys with wiggle that can make people miss that can shake you down and break your ankles but when you got all this mud and nastiness you can't break no ankle you can't wiggle nobody down you gotta run north and south and that's really a disadvantage if you're a guy that plays it as a straight Barnett from the shotgun, keeps it again, and he's going to hold on to it this time past the 40. And he tried to shake and bake, but as you said, the wiggle's just not there. No. And uh, but he does get a pretty good gain on first down, but of about four, bring up second down to yeah. six. Yeah. Then you get a guy like John Barrett, six four, two twenty five senior, with not as much wiggle, but he got those long striding legs. He's covering ground. That looks pretty pretty impressive. So hey, you know. It, you got to use what you can use when you can use it. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the final of this game uh, may be 6-3, maybe, <laughs> you know, 9-3, uh, something like that, because it's going to take a lot to get into the end zone this afternoon. And the handoff to Simple on the left side of the line, and he gets uh, up past the 45 and near the first down yards. He'll be a couple of yards short. And that will probably be the last play of the quarter, and it is. Well, just like we thought, the weather playing a huge factor. Three turnovers in the first. So we head to the second, the NAI National Championship game. Carroll on top by three. At work, I wear black. My old dandruff shampoo wasn't working, so I switched. Sell some. been an ugly first quarter a lot of rain a lot of mud and one field goal carol on top by three welcome back to nai national championship game the rumble on the river 12 carol college has the ball right now and converts on third down and into sioux falls territory first down at the 48 you know we talked about running the football in this weather getting north and south that's exactly what Gabe Lee did on that when he covered the ball up all six points with two hands hit it up inside off tackle not trying to stretch it and get around with speed even though he has it hit it up inside that's a good solid gain of yardage and a good job by that guys up front big Bubba Bartlett blocking everybody's involved <laughs> gaining some yards I love that name you, Bubba. you've been waiting all day for that yeah folks he said big Bubba about 10 times last night at dinner so <laughs> and you look at the uh, and whistle blow and we'll see uh, they're believe, in charge I, I believe there is a, uh, a what we call it my time well, we, well we call it a a, a uniform malfunction and uh, they'll get it all wrapped up. You see that? That's but a football when you, when, you look at, when you look at these two schools uh, for football, they've really been a staple 
in, uh, in in not only the finals but the playoffs the last 10 years. Sioux Falls winning in 1996 and then last year and of course well documented uh, Carroll one of three colleges to ever win four national championships in a row in any level of football. Simple off the left side Just a couple of yards and I believe there is a flag down on the play. And there is legal motion, so they'll back it up five. You know, with the weather the way it is, you know, you, you got to think, did a guy mean it? Maybe he was sliding when he went in motion. He didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm amazed that uh, that all of the electronics involved with the games are, are still working. Quite honestly, uh, I remember last year we we cut out about halfway through because of the weather and the, the referee couldn't hear him. So this year, so far, so good. Back it up five, first down and 15 for Carroll. Barnett setting guys in motion, and again, the and. Simple is to the clock, and it's really hard to continue to send players off for, for different situations. And I understand that's uh, in a game like this, you want to get some title game. Mike Van Deest, who in his nine years at Carroll College has really created a dynasty in the NAIA division. So now back to action. Hempel, who's getting a turn, will get the call and a big hole up the middle. Pass midfield, falls territory, and finally taken down at the 46. Yeah, offensive coordinator Nick hit that ball right up the middle, inside, right behind the center. Number 62, Bryson Pelt, Alex Benestiel getting involved in that left side. That's what you have to do. Get the ball, run downhill, jump north and south. No east and west, south is the way to go, and they're solving that right now. Seven yards on that first down run will bring up a second down and eight. You get a 10-point lead in this ball game today, folks. You may with this Carroll deep for defense. Led by number 33 was the first man there. He played third down. Well, I think defensively Rob Tiff was one of that tackle way, way tee off on him that time. I saw him after the play. Play, this is a national championship. This is for all the marbles. And if you're a senior, you don't have a chance to come back. So you want to make every play. Down and long. Four one. And one back in the backfield. From the shotgun, he's going to call his own number. And there's plenty of space right up the middle. And he gets just enough for the first down. They needed about eight. He got eight and a half, and the change will move. And that was just good decision. It looked like it was a plan, plan draw by the quarterback. He did a good job getting by. Didn't want to take the big hit, but he played it. He's a big guy. 6'4", 220. He has shifty and as nimble as our guy under the mud. We are three minutes into this number 12 here in Savannah, Tennessee. Here in the hospitality, he gets the call. Hinges to the 34. And I think these... Uh, Excuse me, that was Dan Lee. It was the uh, starting tailback today. And uh, we're going to be hearing a lot of Lee, a lot of Heron. Uh, and they may be figuring it out that throwing the ball this afternoon is... It's not going to get it done. And run the ball, those plays to the outside and not work. Guys are hitting guys in the mouth. Look for to have success. Lee gets it again, but this time hit hard behind the first man there, Rob Tip. And there'll be a loss on the plate and a long nine. Himself earlier for not making a big tackle, and he made up for it right here. He wasn't sold by the fake and the comeback on the screen. He held his position, did a tremendous job, you know, cutting. And that's what you want to do in a national championship, contribute for your defense. You know, when you talk about this Carroll team, uh, you know, they, they, can, they compete as far as uh, recruiting players with those and the bigger schools, and they may go to bigger schools. They come to Carroll. Third down and nine. Out of the pocket, but it's on the ground. We'll see who recovers it. And I believe Sioux Falls 8 2. Barnett just drops the foot. And instead of sliding out of bounds, it stayed inbounds. 
And I believe it was covered by number 54, Bannon Colstra. And Sioux Falls now has their second turnover and of the that, afternoon. That was that was that was amazing. Man, this is just this is aggressive than seeing a game of a lot of things that are unpredictable. This is that kind of game. You know, to square, looking to make a throw. You're all, but in this special day, you got to tuck it, baby. You got you got to tuck and run. You, you might not even take those throws downfield. So each team now with two turnovers apiece. And we have 10.06 to go here in the second quarter. And Cavender and Sioux Falls offense back on the field. And he tries to go to Erickson, who was well covered that time by number seven, Zach Richardson. Incomplete. Talk about the offensive plays. You can have six. Sioux Falls has to go back and take a page. That's what today the fun does. Those kind of plays are the one. Falls has to get back to that. Run the ball. North has it, which is your strength. Just take the three. It's not too fancy, but it's going to help you win. Cavender now will take it on the shotgun. Hands it off to Simple. Big hole over the left side. Five to the 48 and 20 for the first down. And the change move for Sioux Falls. Yeah, that was a nice kind of run. Going to the left side behind Blake Cleansing and Brady Swaybach. Both of those guys blocking, putting bodies on bodies. And Mr. Simple. You know, it was funny last night talking to uh, Kalen DeBoer head coach of, of Sioux Falls, and, and despite the fact that they were defending national champions from a year ago, he said lining up in the first practice this year, uh, that most of the guys didn't know if, if, they, if they should zig when they were supposed to zag, or because uh, there were so many new players, so many young players. Simple gets the call straight up the middle. Not much there, maybe a couple. And he was really amazed that not a nation, but they got better started playing well together and you can see obviously yeah and right now I'm seeing that they're developing recognizing the way to have success offensively is to have the simple runs inside by Mr. Simple some simple play action this is the way to move the ball downfield and as a great as dynamic offense that they've been all season now they got to go back and sort of redefine themselves in the next uh, half hour or so and two falls that last first down was the first of the game for them so finally by a big number 96, Mike Ogren, 6'4", 2 and a loss on the play. Bring up third down and long. Well, look at Cavender, look down the field. No receivers were open. The routes are taking too long to get open. The receivers can't get the traction. He's looking down against a Ricky Dink Elementary School D, best in the business in the NAIA, and they're swarming, and they're taking them down. So we'll see what decides the call as he couples as the, uh, well, too creative in this situation. A simple running play, and maybe a couple, and Sioux Falls again will be forced to punt. Yeah, I think that we talked about early, you know, this team, the Carroll defense quarterback, and we sat and talked with Kalen DeBoer yesterday. He said, hey, one of the things we can't do is we can't give up sacks. Those are drive killers. They throw you all out of whack, and offensively we have plays, but if you push in a tough spot, now when this weather almost guarantees your drive is dead. So for Carroll, back to Milo Dragovich. And he will fair catch it at the 28. Good hands there <laughs> for him. I mean, right now, every every play is a toss-up. Every punt, every kickoff, and you, you can't call it until it's absolutely uh, in his hands. Time to take another quick break. Uh, we are 7.20 left here in the second quarter. It's still 3-0, Carroll. I've played a lot of stages over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a good night, Tennessee. There's no end adventure starring in Tennessee for an unforgettable vacation or weekend get it. We've got the perfect stage for you. Uh, let's take it up a little bit, honey. Things to do in Tennessee, but next time. Or click for your free Tennessee vacation guide. A 100 minute to academics, athletics. That's what you'll find at the University of Sioux Falls. Experience it can and grow. And where success is ease, but also by a sense of suit. Prepare for your future based on faith. Call today to or take a closer look online at usufalls.edu. Carroll College takes over on offense. 720 remaining here in the second quarter of the rubbing ship, and it's been a lot of slogging so far. The rain continues to fall, and the field continues. 
And that time on the carry, Gabe Lee, just a couple. And it's really going to come down to, Roland, if a team can get deep, and I mean deep, because uh, right now the, the pass. Well, somebody has to master sort of the slip, and somebody's going to master it. And then who like runs like this, that's who's going to. That's the 35, just short down. will bring up third down and short. And well, one, they're north and south. You know, you're not trying to be too trickeration ish out here in, in, in the tough weather. You know, you get it up inside, you clear. Gabe Lee has had the hot hand on this offense already, and he's been a, a very consistent run with his hands are covering up that football. His high school Pop Warner coach proud. So we hit the six minute mark of the second quarter, third down and one. Lee gets it again, and he may be to begin with. And that's two or three. Sioux Fall defenders got him, and indeed, Carroll, as they don't want to take any chances inside their own territory. Well, well, the defense over there on the other side, either they coming up making plays, getting after right there up inside, and and there's the DD reckoned to be forced with, a force to be reckoned with as well, and, and they're number two. Yeah, first man in on that last play, it will land at 35 and skid down to 27, <laughs> and that's where Sioux Falls will take over. So a lot of punting and a lot of running thus far, and we're going to have nine remaining. Still a three-point game here in Savannah. Carroll College. Historic campus in Helena, Montana. With a nationally recognized academic program and faculty, Carroll's private college offers enormous opportunities to students in this Carroll College. You can expect more, a lot more. Overbreak beats the ball on blacktop. Full squads get boxed like flat top. Fades, cut up from long range. or on the baseline at takeover. The 40s mark, we battle. Raw 10 stop as you defenseless. Now bear witness the raw bruise, more grip, more game. Indoor out, one speed, all out. For love, respect, keep it checked. Brawling game. Time shouldn't be. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let Hardin County, Tennessee, from golfing to water sports to music, come to a place where Southern hospitality is more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. They call 1 800 552 FUMN. That's 1 800 552 3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let and the flags are flying, the wind is blowing, the rain is still coming down. There you see the Five national champion for him in Sioux Falls. Trying to win a, another one today, trying to repeat, but it has been tough sledding thus far. The Sioux Falls attack, averaging uh, over 46 points a game thus far, help as we are deep. So, second down and 10 for Sioux Falls and Chad Cavender. And if you missed us, off the top of the broadcast, Cavender last night at the uh, the annual uh, dinner was named the NAIA National Player of the Year. So certainly pleased about that. A great defense by Carroll and a loss on the play. It'll bring up third. This defense, you know, a Carroll defense giving one yards a game, and you see why. One, Owen Keppen, this guy is just a play that line of scrimmage. Again, running backs cannot mud. Place to the strength of a good defense. Team is, is, is almost impossible to pick up. Cavender back to pass. He's going to throw it to the near side, and it was there, just dropped, intended for number 87. And he at the pass. Right. The wide receiver, you got to make adjustments to how you catch that one out from the top and catching it normal. And this hands underneath the football, catch it like a basket. Maybe roll up. It might look a little corn to catch. This is the time to catch it like you were. And Brown back to receive. Brown fair catch at the 40. So relatively faint with 340. And we will take one more break. Now we're stuck. And This is Bill Rosenfeder speaking, the director for the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. We are here for him at Kansas City, Missouri tonight. Over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a great time. There's no end to the beauty music in Tennessee for an unforgettable beach stage for you. Uh, let's take it up a little bit, honey. There's all kinds of but next time, let's take... Call or click for your free... 
Hardin County is one of the fastest growing counties in Tennessee. Operate in Hardin County because of offerings such as above par educational programs, the percent of the U.S. market within one day, climate created by the local governments. These are just a few of the reasons Hardin County is a wonderful place to call home. To 800 552 County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. Holy Ripper. But there is a lot of water. And the ball is on the ground. Barnett goes on it. So a bad snap by the center. And so the Carroll, all that. But uh, right now it uh, is called for, uh, for the quarterbacks and the running backs. Football. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Yes, it's very it's tough. Like a, a double snap. Yeah, he tried to grab it and see if he could just lay on the uh, ball. Pretty, pretty headsy. I think they would have rather had a penalty than the uh, nearly, what, 17-yard loss or whatever it was. Hand off to Gabe and just a couple of yards as we... Uh, you know, when you look at all those jerseys, you see all that mud and everything. That, you know, yeah, this weather isn't nice. And, <laughs> and, yeah, you know, you wish you could. But this is a uh, national championship. Oh, my They're mud. If you're a football player, this, this is what you like. Well, he played most of his career in the town. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm from that. <laughs> Barnett in the shotgun. Chris Brown goes in motion. Fakes it to Lee. Let a fly down the near side. He's got a man out. picked off. And good coverage down Felder. Excuse me, show in Felder. That'll bring up fourth down, and Sioux Falls got to get some points on the board before halftime. Tom Barnett with his shoulders square again. He got rid of the ball that time, as he should have, because he was chest with Rob Tiff. But that time, again, both guys trying to make a basket catch. Really, it's almost anybody's ball in this kind of weather. You know, it's really not based off, it's just based off who can do the basket catch. Put it out of their mind, and, uh, and those three points came off two Sioux Falls turnovers. We'll show you at halftime. But kick by Theory. He's been the one uh, been helping, you know, keep Sioux Falls deep in their own territory. Another good punt by Theory remaining. Sioux Falls with uh, almost 80 yards if they want to get on the board here before halftime. Yeah, I think the biggest thing from an offensive perspective is they got to rally and settle down this drive. They have to be focused, be accept to take three yards. You keep taking three yards every single time, it's going to add up. You're going to run out of field. They can't get aggressive. I know they're itching. They're used to scoring 40 some odd points a game, but right now, only sound. Take the three or four yards. Right in the ball too. He hasn't got the ball. A little four or five. All American tight end has to him, and that one was incomplete. Cavender, and there's the man we're talking about, Fenchroy, for a couple of yards down to about the 20. To listen from the booth, get the ball to your a lot. It got him involved in the game. Their playmakers are performing. Now it's time to get the offense going. And that is the first completion of the game for Chad, the National Player of the Year. And that pass, short hops his, and it'll bring up third down and long. You know how well he has punted in this game. He is averaging over 43 yards. Wow. Thus far, and in this weather, that is, uh, last punt went for 48 yards. So it's very difficult when he's pinning the to really get anything going offensively. Offensive weapon unto himself right now because he's making it so tough for Sioux Falls to get down feet. Exactly what you need from your kicker. Show up in the championship game. 127 remaining on the clock before, and there's a false start on the end, so that'll back it up five. So Carroll College right now, wrote. They would love to stop the Cougars right here. Ball start, number five yards, still third down. And if they can uh, get in line for a possible field goal before halftime. Or not, Ro, or? Were <laughs> <laughs> you talking? <laughs> Sometimes these guys just watch and see what happens. <laughs> But that's what the people are doing at home. We're supposed to, to talk about what happens. Down and long, Cavender hands off to Simple. And he's cut right at the 22. I'm Carroll College. I'm calling a timeout. It's going into the up by three as the clock continues to run. It hits the one looking at the clock. And with fourth and eight and the clock continuing to run, that's exactly... Uh, well, now they are going to call a timeout, but, bro, they wasted about uh, 25 or 30 seconds there off the clock. Yeah, that, that was sort of odd right there. I mean, I'm thinking that no matter what they do, they're not going to try to be too aggressive offensively. This game has been too much slip and slide, rugby craziness. You don't want to have anything foolish happening, but something I did notice just then, Fosai Fenceroy just went off limping. Yeah. He looked at him. He's, he's one of the guys that, that can really help. Very, very heavily. 
limbing very heavily uh, at the end of the bench right at the uh, the 30-yard line on the Sioux Falls sideline. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, at halftime. But uh, in the Sioux Falls offense, and if he can't go in the second half, uh, hurt their chances. But right now, after the uh, timeout, Milo Dragovich is back to receive, standing at his own 40. Gold shoes you can't miss. Snap, and the kick is blocked. The kick is blocked, and it falls, and, and is dead there. And has the kick blocked, and Carroll Collins Manny, but Rowe, I go immediately back to they would have had over a minute to play if they would have called timeout right after that third down play. Well, those kind of plays are, are game breakers that time when you get a chance to, to block a punt It just redefines the game and I don't think the guys that were on other They sort of had a little lazy little push They just nudged the guy left it open for a playmaker to come in and block the kick. Sean Holland was the man who got his hands on the punt So now Carroll will take over at the one yard line with 36.1 seconds remaining here Is that why not calling timeout? Earlier was a mistake or not. Barnett in the shotgun. Back to pass. And he did not. The clock continues to run. He's down at the 2, 21, 20.
chosen to operate in Hardin County because of offerings such as above par educational programs, delivery to 76% of the U.S. market within one day, and a pro-business climate created by the local governments. These are just a few of the reasons Hardin County is a wonderful place to call home. To find out more about Hardin County, call Team Hardin County at 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee, let the pace move you. Well, welcome back, everybody, to halftime here in Savannah, Tennessee. Carroll on top of Sioux Falls in the NAIA National Championship game, three to nothing. And we bring you back inside our warm booth. It's now time for me to be on my best behavior because we have two very esteemed gentlemen joining us now from Sioux Falls, President Dr. Mark Benedetto and also from uh, Carroll, uh, Dr. Tom Trubon. Gentlemen, uh, nine of the last 11 years, one of you two has been here. I mean, you got to be getting used to coming. We are, and we want to thank the folks of Savannah and Hardin County. They do a great job. They didn't do the weather for us today, but we can't hold them to that. But, uh, you know, this is a goal for both of our teams to get to the national tournament. Uh, you got two teams in here this year that are 27-0 and 0 combined. And so it's really a dream come true, and all my – uh, congratulations go, goes out to the players and the coaches, assistant coaches, and uh, this is really a success for both institutions. Well, it's a great opportunity to come back. Uh, you know, Carroll has won uh, eight uh, Frontier Conference championships in a row, but uh, as Mark says, this is what the young men and their coaches aim at, coming out to the national championship. It's, uh, it's great to be back here. It's great to have number one and number two back, and uh, we've had a, a great first half. A lot of fans out there from both of our institutions. We've got right. folks in 24 different cities across the country, especially hello to the folks in Seattle. I know they want me to say that. This is a, this is a great opportunity for college football. Real, real quick, what does this do for, for both institutions to be on national TV as far as a, a recruiting standpoint? Obviously, NAIA, it's, it's academic first, uh, athletic second, and I, I think that's what I love about the NAIA the most. Well, I think institutions our size, both Carroll and USF, really strive for institutional positioning. And so we want to thank College Sports Television for giving us this opportunity to be on national television. Let our story get out because uh, we're seeing enrollment at both institutions grow. You can't attribute everything to football, but any time that you're having success on a college campus, whether you're recruiting quality faculty or winning in sports or uh, just per, just getting the word out about your institution, that's a real success. And so we thank you for being here. Man, we wish we could have given here. you a little sunshine, but uh, thanks for putting this on national television. There's no problem. It gives us a great opportunity, both institutions, to talk about student athletes, to talk about the faculty, the academic programs at our two institutions to uh, welcome back so many of our alumni who come out for these games and all of our athletic events. Uh, NAI is, uh, you know, says a lot of great things about student athletes. It says a lot of great things about character. And that represents uh, these two faith-based institutions. Well, gentlemen, we certainly do appreciate you not only being here but joining us at the half. Thank, Thank you. You. Uh, you bet. Well, it's halftime. When we come back, highlights and statistics. And then we'll kick things off for the second half. We're live in Savannah. We'll be back. Introducing Payne's newest vanishing act. New Icy Hot Vanishing Scent. Now the power of Icy Hot glides on icy to dull paint, then gets hot to relax it away, and the scent vanishes. New Icy Hot Vanishing Scent. Make pain and scent a vanishing act. How does emergency boost your health and your energy? With a powerful formula built on a thousand milligrams of vitamin C to give your immune system a fighting chance. Emergency. Feel the good. This is my playbook. 300 Jet X Lego Z scene. The best play here is probably at a regular, we can just go change right, A right, two jet dancer fake 40 X shell across. You sound funny. You sound funny. If I'm reading them bedtime stories and they're not falling asleep, I go right to the playbook. It puts everybody to sleep. <laughs> Y scramble to red left swap tight close Z right sprint right G U corner half back flat. confident. 
difference. For me, it's pride. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how your child could become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Well, welcome back, everybody. 3 nothing at the half. Carol on top of Sioux Falls. The Rumble... On the River 12, and when you talk about highlights, Roland, well, there weren't a whole lot of them, but let's take a look at what transpired in the first half. Well, what transpired was a sloppy festival of, of mud -aliciousness. It was crazy, man. <laughs> Everybody was losing the ball, running backs, quarterbacks, you name it. You know, the mud was immense. And these are not just guys. These are playmakers. This is the national championship. you got to assume there's better ball security out of both sides of the football. But because of the mud, bad things were happening. Special teams were a big factor in the block punt. And, and right now, Carroll College has been showing that they're trying to do the fundamentals it takes to be successful in this game. Take a look at the uh, first half statistics, and folks, not a whole lot to uh, show you right there. Yeah. It, it's not the team's fault. Uh, certainly the weather and the rain continues to fall at a steady pace, and uh, so hence the total yardage and the turnovers have really played a part, and the, uh, the, the lone field goal came off a muff punt. So um, we'll see what uh, will transpire in the second half, and we're just about set for the second half kickoff. So Carroll College will get the uh, ball to start the second half, and we'll see what they can do with it. You know, it's important. One thing that we saw a theme later in, late in the game well, in this first half was run the football north and south. Don't try to be east and west. Don't try to be too too slick with it. Just be fundamentally sound. Get the ball downfield and, and run the ball and run the ball in between the tackles. And Gabe Lee, number 20, has had some great success all week long, all game long, excuse me, this first half. So, Travis Brown and... Uh, is back to... Receive the kick. And also Prospery will take it. And he'll take it at the 15. Come to the near side. And up past the 30 and taken down at the 31. And that's where Carroll and Josh Barnett will take over uh, here in the second half. And what do they need to do, Roland, to get something going offensively? Because obviously in the first half, nothing went right offensively for either team well the only thing went right you know i started talking about number 20 gabe lee you know he's been a bright spot and when we sat and talked with coach van Dees, you know he said that gabe lee's been a guy that's been having great momentum towards the end of the season he's a backup but he had the hot hand been a pleasant surprise they've been giving him the football i say they keep pounding inside north and south giving him the ball and letting him gain some early yards john barnett hands it off to gabe lee a short gain on first down bring up second down and long well, we are uh, less than 30 minutes away from crowning an NAIA national champion. Will it be Sioux Falls? Will they continue their long winning streak and make it 28 straight, the longest in all of college football? Or will Carroll College make it five out of the last six years here in Savannah? It's always been a uh, fun trip whenever we come down here. Lots of... Uh, nice guests and people that stopped by the uh, studio and Barnett and the pass I believe they're saying it is complete complete to Travis Brown on the far side and it's just enough for a first down and the chains will move. And I like the fake offensive coordinator, Nick Howlett. Congratulations. Way to adapt to the mud. I love the play action, the misdirection. Got John Barnett out into some, some space and able to make a tight throw. Accurate as you can be right now in the mud. And a good, a good basket catch by the receiver. That's what you want to see. Make the basket catch when you're in the mud. 
So first down and 10 up at the 42 of Carroll. Gabe Lee picking his way and good yardage that time up past the 45. And I, I, I'm just going to go out on a limb here, Ro, and say that at halftime, both of these teams uh, got a little bit of a talking to, I guess you could say. And uh, you can come out and see, at least on the Carroll side, that there's a little bit of, uh, of juice, so to speak, um, to move the ball, hang on to the ball, and, and be proficient on the offensive side. Yeah, this game plays right to, to Carroll. You know, this is exactly what you want. If you're the Fighting Saints, you're happy right now. You have a strong powerhouse defense, a, bit, a, a, a manageable offense, and right now, this game 3 nothing is playing right into your hands. So a uh, short gain on the carry by Gabe Lee. It'll bring up a third down and a long four right at midfield. <laughs> no, in the mud, this, it's a long floor. You're right, long four in the mud. We want to give a, uh, say a quick hello to our uh, good friend that we met uh, this week, Aaron Bell. A young man that we met uh, here uh, from Savannah. And just stopped by the uh, the booth. And I think he wants to take your job, bro. So I think he has the skills. Barnett, he's got a man going deep. He decides not to throw it, holds on to it. And he goes to his secondary receiver. No flag on the play. Could have been. Good coverage out there at the 35. And now Carroll will be forced to punt after their first possession. Well, when you look at that first drive, there are some things you can be excited about. One, they came back to the workhorse. Gabe Lee, number 20, got a chance to hit it up inside. John Barnett got a little tricky, got out on the wing and made a nice throw. I mean, that was positive. And in a field position game, those are the kind of things you want. You get first downs, they add up. Now they're going to punt the ball, hopefully get good field position. It's going to set them up for a, a great second half so far. And a theory comes in to punt. He was a uh, really... Did a wonderful job in the first half, and again, a booming punt. That one will go into the end zone, so Sioux Falls will take over on their own 20, and they've got to get something going. They trail by three right now, but in the first half, they really had nothing to speak of, only a couple of uh, completions, and the uh, player of the year, Chad Cavender, was unable to get anything going. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back. Sioux Falls, their first possession of the second half here in Savannah. Stick around. I've played a lot of stages over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a great time, day or night, Tennessee. There's no end to the beauty, music, and adventure starring in Tennessee. For an unforgettable vacation or weekend getaway any time of the year, we've got the perfect stage for you. Uh, let's take it up a little bit, honey. There's all kinds of things to do in Tennessee, but next time, let's take the pink Cadillac. Call or click for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Life is hectic. Playtime shouldn't be. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let the pace move you. Hardin County, Tennessee. From golfing to water sports to museums, Hardin County has it all. Come to a place where Southern hospitality is more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. For more information about Hardin County, call 1-800-552-FUNN. That's 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. Falls takes over at their own 20. First possession of the second half. Cavender hands it off to Simple, and he gets it up to about the 22. It'll bring up a second down and eight. So what does Sioux Falls need to do here in the second half to, to not only get on the board but keep Carroll from scoring? As weird as it sounds, they, they need to do exactly what Carol Cowser is doing offensively. 
They're running the ball in between the tackles. They're taking the short, intermediate passing game. They're trying. You know, I just saw that first play by Simple. That was the right idea. Up inside, inside the tackles, trying to get some yards. You got to take those two yards and be comfortable taking the long route today in offense. Cavender back to pass, and he's got a lot of room to the near side. He's got to keep it himself, showing the, the good speed, and he gets knocked out just short of the 30. And I believe he'll be about a yard short of the first down, but that's really the first time this afternoon you got to see his speed and elusiveness. And they take a page right off the Carroll College offense. You remember just a few minutes ago seeing John Barnett do the same thing last half. You know, that's the kind of plays you got to make. Misdirection works in the weather. The linebackers cannot shift and get back across the field with that kind of speed and precision. And the reality is Chad Cavender is a pretty darn good athlete. Well, they are going to give him a first down. I thought he was a half a yard short, but I also wear contacts. So first down and 10, and first downs have been very difficult to come by this afternoon. And it appears like the rain is letting up just a little bit and a lot of room for Simple. And he's up past midfield inside the 45 and down to the 42. And by far the biggest play for Sioux Fall this afternoon. And their sideline erupts. And that started with great blocks by both Blake Cleansing and Brady Swaybach knocking people down. This is a good job. Simple again inside the tackle, just paying attention. This is nothing spectacular, but this is the kind of thing that can happen when you keep hacking away, being patient, and running the ball inside the tackles. 26 yards on the run up the middle. And first down inside Carroll territory, a place that Sioux Falls is very unfamiliar with. Cavender. Out to Erickson, completed inside the 40, a short game. Actually about a six yard game. And we reported in the first half, Fitzroy, their uh, All-American uh, tight end, went out and was limping uh, in a major way. He is back on the field, he is playing. So that's good news uh, for the Cougars. What else is good news is getting your playmakers involved. Number 41, Trey Erickson. You know, he's the guy that the coach said he wants to get the ball any which way possible. He's one of the biggest playmakers in offense. It's good to see him going, even if it's a five or six yard catch. Simple, gets the carry. And that time, the offensive line, a big time push. So he was two yards past the line of scrimmage before he was touched. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down, but third down and short, they can manage. I think the way it's looking now, this is a chance that, that the run is definitely the way to go. I, I think, you know, Simple, he's been doing a good job on the left-hand side in particular. So look for him to, to, to run right behind that big left tackle, number 63, Blake, Blake Clinton. He, he's getting it done in the left guard, Brady Schweinbach. Both of those seniors are really getting it done on the left side. Simple, 12 carries, 64 yards. Kavner, he's, gonna, he's going deep. He's got a man out there. It's caught at the one. It's caught by Alex Anderson. There is a flag down, I believe. They're going to call pass interference. But a big-time pitch and catch. Cavender to Anderson, and it should be first down and goal. That was a big-time play, you know, thinking that you're going to stick with running the ball and keeping the three yards in the cloud of dust. Way to mix it up. Right there, that was Curtis Briggs, the quarterback coach, Kalen DeBoer, both of those guys making the right decision. Tremendous grab by Alex Anderson. This is a freshman making that acrobatic catch in the national championship. Big-time grab. I know everybody's happy back in Roosevelt High School. The freshman is coming to play here in the national championship. 35 yards on that play, and it's marked down at the one first down and goal. And this is a must-get touchdown situation for Sioux Falls. Power eye formation behind Cavender. He hands off to Ryan Lowmiller, and he's in for the touchdown. It didn't take them long. There is a flag down on the play, however. Well, when you watch this play, all you saw was purple jerseys knocking white shirts back. You know, when you're Ryan Low Miller and all you see is that green avalanche, it looks awfully good. Dead ball personal foul has been called on Sioux Falls. However, the touchdown will count. And we'll see if they enforce it on the extra point or on the kickoff. So 
Sioux Falls coming out of the locker room and showing that explosive offense despite the weather. Well, you know, you look at the weather. Offense, personal foul, touchdown counts. It will be assessed on the try. So they will back it up on the try. And this is very significant, Ro, because if he misses the extra point, then we're still sitting at a three-point game. So the personal foul was called on, well, he said on number 52, and I don't have a 52 on my Yeah, he, he um, had a tough time score. getting that one out anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just say it was on somebody. And uh, they're going to back it up 15. So now uh, they'll place it at the 17, which would make this a 34-yard extra point. Well, their kicker definitely has the leg for it. Matt Lindgren in for the, you don't say this very often, all-important extra point. Snap is good, down, and the kick is going to be well short. Well, the penalty really hurt that time as Lindgren couldn't get the ball even to the goalpost. So after the one-yard touchdown by Low Miller, and Sioux Falls takes the lead for the first time this afternoon, the score is 6-3 instead of 7-3. That could be huge down the line. What's huge is that this weather is changing now, and if you're Sioux Falls, the weather is something that's going to play to your advantage if it gets nicer. All right, well, we got to take a break. We'll be back to talk about it in just a little bit. But after a 35-yard pitch and catch, Sioux Falls capitalizes and takes the lead. There'll come a day when you'll wonder. You'll think back to how you used to listen. Before you heard your music, your sports, your talk. All from the same place. And you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. Serious. Everything else falls short. Over 130 channels. Only one place to get it all. Sirius Satellite Radio. At work, I wear black. My old dandruff shampoo wasn't working, so I switched. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended for flakes and itch. Never wear black without the blue. Selsun Blue. For ultimate daily care, try Selsun Blue Salon. Extreme power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. We are back in a very happy Sioux Falls sideline after a, uh, a very impressive drive to start the second half. And they are on top 6 3. The extra point no good after the personal foul uh, backed it up and made it a 34 yard try. But nevertheless, Sioux Falls got to be very pleased. They get on the scoreboard finally and take a 6-3 lead with 10.07 remaining here in the third quarter. Kickoff goes to Brown. And Brown will bring it to the near side, and he's got some room. 35-40, 45-and slides out of bounds. And a flag, they're going to call a late hit. So tack on 15, and that will give Carroll fantastic field position to start this particular drive. Well, they're going to make that call on the kicker who came in late and tried to get on the play. But, but in his defense, you can't even see the sidelines here when you're looking from here. You can't tell where the sidelines are. He's just coming to just bring it. It's all mud. We'll take one more look at it and see exactly if it was a, a late hit. But a great return by Travis Brown. Look to the right of the screen. You can barely even see where the sideline is. You know, you got a kicker who most of them are scared to stick their neck in there. That's a tough call. Yeah, the guy tried and, to come and, in and, and make a play. To, to be brutally honest, he wasn't even touched. <laughs> but uh, they're going to mark off the 15. Number five of the kicking team, Ooh. 15 yards, first down. Well, you 
you got to stick with the call. And speaking of drives, uh, obviously that last drive by Sioux Falls uh, was their longest drive of the afternoon. Seven plays, 80 yards, and it only took two minutes and eight seconds. Kalen DeBoer not pleased whatsoever, and quite honestly, I don't blame him. Don't blame him. Don't blame him whatsoever. But you got to continue on. First down at the 38 of Sioux Falls for Carroll. Barnett hands it to Gabe Lee and a big time push. And we're seeing a completely different half here in the first five plus minutes of this third quarter. And I don't know what happened in the locker room, but both offenses, big time pushes and also completing passes. What happened? Well, I think that when you look at Carroll's offense, that Carroll Cowles, they've been doing the same thing as they end out the first half. They're running it up inside, Gabe Lee, hitting it in between the tackles. They're changing nothing. But what has happened is Sue Ball's offense has been following suit and trying to play to that to, to their strengths and get the ball and change up the game a little bit. Lee again, picking his way, breaks one tackle, gets all the way down to the 25, and that's enough for another first down. The chains move, and now Carroll College is on the move. Well, well, Gabe Lee is 5'11 and 215 pounds, but he's rumbling right now. He's looking like a little Jerome Bettis, you know, Mike Allstop from the NFL, my NFL days. You know, he's, boom, boom, you know, busting up inside, inside those tackles. And it, look, it looks good when you when you can run the ball consistently up inside and you hold on to the football. That's impressive, and that's just what the doctor ordered for this match. You know, that may be the first time that Gabe Lee has ever been compared to Jerome Bettis. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's reminded me of it tonight. <laughs> Bang it in there. First down and 10 at the 25 of Sioux Falls. Lee again gets the call. Lowers his shoulder. And he gets about three. And it really seems the uh, the rain is still falling, folks. Um, but it's not falling nearly as hard as it was in the first half. So I think the, the field is drying out a little bit. So I think you can see the difference. Uh, the players are, are being able to plant uh, a lot better and be able not, to run not, well, plays. Well, not a lot better. Well, better. <laughs> well, better. <laughs> They're telling you, you watch that. <laughs> Second down, seven. Barnett from the shotgun calls his own number. Straight up the middle. And just holding on for dear life was Darren Quayle. Grabbed the ankle and just wouldn't let go. So now a big third down play, kind of in the gray area for Carroll at the 20. And, and normally you wouldn't say that, but with the weather and, and where they're at in the field, you may have to go for it on fourth down. I don't know. Yeah, th this is definitely a time when, when you think about it. You know, it, it's it, they've been having some success. Again, Gabe Lee is not to, to beat a dead horse, but you got to ride him if he's doing well. And so look for Gabe Lee to continue to get the ball. He might get it twice coming up and he makes two plays. Brown in motion. Lee gets the handoff, and he may go. 10-5, touchdown, Carroll. Great blocking on the play, and Lee found the hole, and he goes 20 yards. And Carroll, just like that, back on top. Well, we said you might have to, he might get a dose of Gabe Lee twice, but you only need it once. Tremendous blocks on the left-hand side. Brian Camino, the senior left tackle, Alex Fantasteel at left guard. Both of those guys really sealed their mans. And Gabe Lee, he's been running downhill. That time he got nifty, went outside the tackle just a little bit, but nobody home on defense for Sioux Falls. Marcus Miller in for the extra point. It is up. And it is good. So, folks, settle in. We're about to have some fun. I kind of like it. Hey, Two touchdowns here in the first uh, seven and a half minutes of this uh, third quarter after a <laughs> look at that face. That's a football player. That's a Gabe national Lee, championship. That man. I'm is loving a this. football player. We're going to take a break, but this thing has just gotten exciting in a hurry. Gabe Lee, 20 yards, Carroll on top, 10-6. We're back in a moment. Hardin County is one of the fastest growing counties in Tennessee. Companies like Tenneco have chosen to operate in Hardin County because of offerings such as above-par educational programs, delivery to 76% of the U.S. market within one day, and a pro-business climate created by the local governments. These are just a few of the reasons Hardin County is a wonderful place to call home. 
To find out more about Hardin County, call Team Hardin County at 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee, let the pace move you. Life is hectic. Playtime shouldn't be. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let the pace move you. Hardin County, Tennessee. From golfing to water sports to museums, Hardin County has it all. Come to a place where Southern hospitality is more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. For more information about Hardin County, call 1-800-552-FUNN. That's 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. Grandpa sure will be excited. It's been a long time since you and Aunt Marsha have been here. Me and my dad go fishing there a lot. That's the high school where my brother plays football. And that's the Hardin Medical Center where they're taking real good care of my grandpa. And that's Dr. Good. He delivered my baby sister. Come on, Joey, let's go see Grandpa. Hardin Medical Center. Quality care right here at home. Proud sponsor of the NAIA Championship Game. All right, we're starting to have some fun here in Savannah, Tennessee, folks. Carroll on top, 10-6 after a 20-yard touchdown run by that man right there. It gave Lee. It didn't take him long. Five plays, 37 yards, 241 after the uh, great kickoff uh, return and the uh, added penalty gave Carroll great field position. And so now Carroll on top, can Sue Falls answer. The kickoff comes down to Simple. He fumbles it, picks it back up, and it's crushed at the 22. He's lucky to hang on to that one. Great coverage by Carroll. And Sioux Falls and Chad Cavender, and this is where a player of the year steps up and proves it. Yeah, this is where you got to prove it, but right here, Simple. You got to simply hold on to the ball. You bobbled it, you played with it, you got plastered. That's how it works in the national championship. Simple, you got to get a little aggressive and get down. Get down, buddy. Get down. Well, for Gabe Lee on Carroll's side, 20 carries, 87 yards, and that last all-important touchdown to put the momentum back on the Fighting Saints sidelines. So now first down to 10 at the 22 for Chad Cavender. Hands it off to Simple, and nowhere for him to go. The first person there, big number 55, Rick Young. And so second down and long for the Cougars. Rick Young's an, another linebacker who, who has been a big part of this defense, making plays, you know, from Post Falls, Idaho, you know, just a playmaker. And have, you, have you ever been to Post Falls? Never been to Post Falls, had a chance to meet some of his family and whatnot coming from the game, and uh, just just a tremendous guy and just a playmaker. Cavender under center this time, back to pass. Got a man open, Erickson completed, breaks one tackle, and we'll see where he stepped out at. They're going to say right about 31-32 to bring up third down and short. Well, it's tough to tell. You, you can't really see the sideline, so he's running. I mean, you're wondering in TV land, why does he keep running? Because you, you can't see the sideline. Look at it. See right there, it's just all a bunch of mud. and <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bunch of gook. Right now, it's all about approximation. Approximation. Uh, approximately, he went out. So, uh, Where's the sideline? So down there, they're actually down there discussing um, that exact thing. Because I think... Uh, you, you see that? Where's the... Is right, oh, there's know, a sideline. It's oh, right there. You know, it, it's it's very difficult, and you know, I'm not saying whether he was or whether he was not out of bounds, but there was only one guy <laughs> to beat, and they're going to bring a measurement over. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> you know, th this is just fun. They, they, this is college football. This is a national championship, and if you can't have fun watching this, being here, then uh, then you're not a sports fan. That's what I've got to say. This measurement, people around the country are wondering, how are they measuring yeah. this? You know, while we have a second, we promised yesterday, Ro, to say hello to the family from Fresno, California. We met the family of Will Hamilton, number 98. Yeah. And uh, I believe his girlfriend we met as well. Dates, date, well, his sister, his, Will Hamilton's sister, sister, dates Rick Young. Rick Young, right. Yeah, and, the guy and, who and, just made that spectacular play. Yeah, well... And everybody has nicknames, mm -hmm. you know. He has uh, one, too. Well, what's his nickname? Ricky Pooh. Oh, Ricky Pooh. Ricky Pooh. 
And I'm sure he loves that uh, we put that on national TV. But, hey, <laughs> you know. What that, else are we going to do during, way, the, during hey, the measurement? When you find stuff out at, at Avis Rental Car, you'll use anything. So, Ricky Poo, good luck the rest of the way. Third down and short for Sioux Falls. They do not want to give the ball right back over to Carroll, who has the momentum. Whistle blows, power eye formation. Low Miller is the deep man. Oh, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage, and he did not get it. In fact, he may have lost a yard. And I don't believe you can take a chance here in the third quarter to go for this one, and I believe, and exactly, Kalen DeBoer has chosen to punt. Great, great push upfield. Number 48. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Number 48, Nick Gilchrist on that play was really impressive. Got a great surge, ripped inside, inside the, the right guard, got in the backfield. As soon as the running back get the ball, he's there meeting them, smacking your mouth. Nick, you're a senior. I want to make sure you get that love for a great play in the national championship. Can I talk now? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. A good snap, but it, it is bobbled and taken by an up man at the 45 so again the weather plays a huge part and carroll will have great field position inside cougar territory well that was a magical catch and way to get the ball off because that time mr drew anderson you got to anderson you got away with something that woo was pretty special way to get it catch it bobble it and kick it you really have to have added con concentration yeah. today and you can't take uh, anything for granted it was taken by cody zimmerman uh, one of the uh, up men for Carroll. So we'll see if Carroll can add to their lead. They would like nothing better than to punch it in and uh, take a two-score lead right here. Barnett to Travis Brown on the end around. Good pursuit. He breaks a couple of tackles and turns what looked like a loss into a uh, pretty significant gain. You know, that play was just strictly just mano y mano, two guys with a chance to make the play, and, and that time, you know, offense won. You know, from Sioux Falls, you know, you see you see a guy coming up, trying to make a tackle, oopsie, nothing nothing doing. That time, play one, Travis Brown, tremendous job getting the ball, making a guy miss, and moving on to the next level. Second down, five, inside the Sioux Falls 40. This third, third quarter has had a lot of excitement that was lacking in the first half. Gabe Lee gets the call again. Pounds hard, runs really hard, undersized somewhat, but uh, what he meant, what he lacks for in size, he really makes up for in heart because he runs very, very hard in between the tackles. Yeah, Gabe Lee, and he, he's the backup. In case you're just coming in, he was a backup for most of the year. When we talked with Coach Mike Van Dees, he said that Gabe got the hot hand late in the season. It's been a pleasant surprise, and he's been a workhorse, getting 20, 25 carries the last few games. The starting quarter, the starting running back, number 33, Sean Heron, got a little nicked up. Gabe has come in, been a great leader, and, and helping out the team in that running back court. Third and short, Barnett to Lee. Picks his way and picks his way enough for a first down. He needed to get just inside the 35. They mark him down at the 32. There is a man down uh, at the 26. Looks like just cramps, but Carroll College's drive will continue and Gabe Lee has done an outstanding job. They have and Gabe Lee he's been he's been stretching and then getting north and south. That's what he's been doing all game. He's picking and choosing his spots. He rolls but he's not trying to go east and west get side on the sideline. He's stretching and he's getting right up inside. That's what good running backs do and Gabe Lee you're maximizing yourself in a national championship in the mud doing the right things to be successful. 22 carries 94 yards the leading rusher in this game in the mud is Gabe Lee in the mud. <laughs> he he's been one guy that that really uh, has not. It doesn't it doesn't look like he's struggling at all running. Uh, maybe he has longer cleats. Uh, he's he's a little shorter than the rest of the guys. He's five eleven. He's a little lower to the ground. I yeah. mean those two inches maybe count. 
Uh, you know, you can just tell that he just has good wear, awareness and, and balance. And one thing, he's not trying to do too much. He's not trying to break guys down with elusive moves in the hole. He's just strictly squaring his shoulders, covering that ball up, good old-fashioned fundamental football, and getting upfield. And that's that's all you can ask a running back to do in this game under these conditions. David Whitmore uh, was a man that was down for Carroll. He is up and off the field, so we are back to action. First down at 10, a new set of downs for Carroll as this drive continues. Lee gets a call again, a big hole off the right side. He stays on his feet. Momentum takes him out of bounds, but not before he has enough for another first down. And so right now, this running offense for Carroll is really in a groove. And you got to give love to the offensive line on that time. You know, Alex Fantasteel pulled, the left guard pulled and got involved on the right-hand side. The right tackle, Scott Holbrook. These guys are opening up holes, but but Gabe is doing a good enough job to be smart enough to follow his offensive lineman. He's not, you see him high-fiving and getting happy that was Holbrook and him clapping. That's what you want, synergy between the offensive line and your running back. And with that last carry, he went over 100 yards for the day, 105 to be exact. First down and 10 again. And why not just keep riding that horse? Lee down to the 20. And obviously right now with the lead, they want to continue to try and score, but also chew up clock, get to that fourth quarter, get to a point where Sioux Falls has to start um, really pressing the issue. Yeah. You know, defensive coordinator, you know, for Sioux Falls, Chuck Morrell, this is a time when you want to heat it up. This is a time when you want to get those linebackers, get some of your, your guys in the secondary who are big hitters, get those guys involved, bring your strong safety up, and plug those holes, and, and don't allow them to just nickel and dime you down the field. You know, it hasn't been the passing game. It's been the running game, so let's shore that up a little bit. Second down, and Barnett keeps it this time, and it tricked that Sioux Falls defense. He gets inside the five and taken down to the three. And Barnett has given Carroll a first down and goal. That was a tremendous play call. Offensive coordinator Nick Howlett, you've mastered the mud, okay? You're the lord of the mud, the mud right now. Good job. John Barnett got the ball, and that was a play action, but the, the wide receivers out there on the end, they were expecting this. They knew this was coming. They were out there blocking out there in the wide side of the field. The fake just took everybody. <laughs> Look, they're, they're tackling. <laughs> they're, they're, the misdirection well, kills you. Well, I tell you, I tell you what. <laughs> misdirection. I mean, yeah, Rob, Rob Tiff bit on that fake <laughs> so badly that he actually <laughs> tackled the the running back on the far side of the field great ball fake by Barnett and so now Carroll has an opportunity to give his team a two score lead Lee stacked up behind the line of scrimmage great pursuit by the front four of Sioux Falls now right here they Sioux Falls needs to stop Carroll hold them to a field goal so this thing is just a seven-point game and not a 11-point game. Yeah, this is one from a defensive perspective. You know, you, you might want to try to start, you know, send the house a little bit. You don't want to go down, you know, a, another field goal will make it 13, you know, 13-6. But to give up a touchdown will really hurt. Right now, look for some blitz and look for something aggressive. You know, Chuck Morrell doesn't seem like he's the kind of coach to sit back and let this team just march down the field. you got to draw a line in the sand. This is the time to send number three, Demetrius Washington, 33, Rob Tiff. Send those guys inside and look to make a big play in the backfield. Gabe Lee, the deep back, he gets the call again, picks his way, and gets stopped that time. Good tackle by number 28, Trevor Holloman. And we'll see where they mark it at about the two. So it'll bring up third down and goal at the one for Carroll. And, he got, and you would have to think that if they don't get in here, that they would go for this this deep, wouldn't you think? Certainly. You know, right now, a touchdown here really puts a lot of pressure on Sioux Falls. And, and I'm surprised defensively that there's not a lot more blitzing and stuff and taking a chance, you know, how tough yards are to, to come here. you got to really fight. They haven't done anything in the passing game. It's all been on the run, on the ground. Barnett, and the ball's on the ground. The ball is on the ground, and I believe Barnett fell on it. But it's going to be a loss of at least a yard. And a flag is down, and they're going to go illegal procedure. But we'll see if Sioux Falls accepts. I would think that they would not. 
False start, number 62 offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Well, you know, that's a lucky break for Carroll as it was a false start. And so they'll back it up to the six and get to replay third down. Yeah, but but the, but the false start was a number 62, Bryson Pelt. That's the center. You know, they're, they're calling the, the center for, for false start. That doesn't happen too often in college football or in football as a whole. So third down and goal back at the six. A huge break for Carroll that time and another opportunity to punch it in. Lee. The second back in the backfield. They throw a fade. They got a man out there, and a flag flies, and they're going to call pass interference on Nick Benedetto as he clearly impeded the progress of the Carroll wide receiver. Well, that one was sort of a, a tough situation. That time, John Barnett knew what he was doing. He threw it into the right spot. And yes, yes, Nick was, was in a little bit too much position. I think he did impede him. But a tremendous job trying to get the ball to a playmaker. You know, those kind of plays, you know, when you throw them up there, something's going to happen. Number eight on the defense. Penalty will be will place the ball at the two. Automatic first down. So a new set of downs. And Carroll will have first and goal at the two. And what a break for Carroll. And Kalen DeBoer can't believe that he's about to go down by two scores unless his defense can somehow hold. Lee untouched into the end zone. Gabe Lee, the second touchdown of this third quarter and of the game for him. And now Carroll has added to their lead now 16 to 6. Well, Gabe Lee has been doing to him all series, all half, all game long. He simply squared his shoulders up, and you see those white shirts are a little muddy now, so they're not quite white, but they've been given the holes. Number 79, Brian Camino, 861, Alex Fanisteel at the left guard, left tackle positions. Those guys open up holes. It looks pretty darn good. The extra point is good by Marcus Miller. And one more look at the touchdown by Gabe Lee. And Carroll College has really seized control of this game now. As their last two possessions, they've started with great field position and have taken it to the house. And Gabe Lee has finished both of those drives. 17-6 to with 34 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And right now, Sioux Falls in a big hole, and they've got to get something going in a hurry, or Carroll College is going to win their fifth national championship in the past six years. Yeah, what they can't do now is they can't panic. You know, this is the 34 seconds in the third quarter, not the fourth. This is a chance for them just to get a ball, go downfield, score. Don't panic. If you score a touchdown here, the game is still in very much reach. I know Coach has been here before, so look for them just to come back, keep their poise. That's why they're number one in the country for a reason. They won't they won't get rattled too much because they're down. They were down last week, well, last game before they got to the championship, 10-5. Headed to the fourth quarter, so they'll be okay. That last drive, nine plays, 44 yards, and it took up 5-11 off the clock, and it was capped by Lee's two-yard touchdown run. Uh, Lee now 27 carries for 112 yards and those all-important two touchdowns. So Theory will kick off for Carroll with 34 seconds left here in the third. Taken by Simple, and he's going to go to the far side. Hit at the 28, and finally uh, taken down at the 30. So Chad Cavender, and that uh, Sioux Falls offense who came out in their first possession of this third quarter and looked fantastic, scored in just over two minutes, took a 6-3 lead, and you thought, okay, maybe uh, they're taking the momentum over. But just like that, Carroll has come back with two touchdowns of their own. Yeah, and, and there was also, you know, the penalty, the pass interference, giving a, another first down, you know, turn the ball over. You know, when you have, have those extra things happen, that's what makes it very tough to be successful, especially in the national championship. Cavender to pass. He's got a man open over there and completed on the far sideline. Out to about the 35, the number 87, Robert Curvin. 
good for five yards. Second down goal, and they say he did not get out of bounds, so that will be the last play of this third quarter, a very eventful third quarter, a very entertaining third quarter. Well, folks, we're just 15 minutes away from a national champion at the end of three. Carroll 17, Sioux Falls 6. Two touchdowns, over 100 yards on the day. He has been the difference. And as we head towards the fourth quarter, it's 17-6, Carroll. And they are just 15 minutes away from another national championship. And the first play of the fourth quarter for Sioux Falls completed finally to Finchroy, his second catch of the day. And it's enough for a first down, and the chains move. And Sioux Falls really in this possession row, they need to get a score. Not, not a field goal, they need a touchdown. Yeah, and they start out by going senior to senior. The pitch and catch, Chad Cavender getting it to Josiah Finchroy. And he's, he's been the big playmaker all year long. This mud is making it tough for tight ends and receivers to get off. But in order for this offense to have success, Josiah needs to get the ball. First down, Cavender back to pass. Man wide open, Turbin. And nearly intercepted twice. And the ball finds the ground. I don't know how. Should have been caught by Kervin, then should have been intercepted twice. Yeah, and these balls, again, the balls are slippery. You have to catch the ball old school, granny style, granny catches, elementary school, cow. You got you to do it the old way, you know. Basket catch, get your body involved in it. You can't try to catch the ball with your hands. That's the second one Robert Kervin has last slipped through his hands because he's trying to catch it with his hands. He has to make that adjustment and catch the football. So after the near catch, near interception, we're right back to where we started. Second down and 10. Cavender from the shotgun. Three wideouts here to the near side. And he fumbles the snap, and it was a good snap, but just took his eye off of it and had to fall on it. And a, uh, a big gain they cannot afford. Back to the 41, and it'll bring up third down and very long. Yeah, all game long. Little snafus, little little weird, quirky things happening. Losing the ball, not getting a great plays, giving up a sack. You know, these are the kind of things that really hurt a great offense like Sioux Falls. And, and what they have to do from here is that they have to settle down. And right now, third down, they need a big play. Josiah Finchroy is a guy that can come through. You might want to go back to number nine, Alex Anderson. He was a guy that made a play earlier. Let's try him again. So five wideouts, they spread it out. Cavender. All by himself, I lose one man, I lose another, gets a great block, that was past midfield into Carroll territory, but he's going to be well short of a first down, they had to get all the way down to the 43 for a first down. Yeah, and that time it was a good strong rush, number 48, Nick Gilchrist came and sort of forced him to get outside the pocket, good smart playmaker that Chad is, tried to make something happen with his feet, good job of gaining some yards, but not enough. This is another crucial fourth down decision, making time again. And I agree with this. And actually, they're saying he didn't go out and tell the 45. So it's fourth down and only two. And I agree with this call. Down 11. And a whistle blows. And Sioux Falls is going to call a timeout. They want to make sure all their ducks are in a row on a crucial fourth down play. Down 11. Uh, here early in the fourth quarter. Sioux Falls being such an offensive dynamo, you know, 46 points a game. You know, they, they've been doing great things. It's just really going to be interesting, their decision they make. All right, we'll find out when we come back. They trail by 11. I played a lot of stages over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a great time, day or night, Tennessee. There's no end to the beauty, music, and adventure starring in Tennessee. For an unforgettable vacation or weekend getaway any time of the year, we've got the perfect stage for you. Uh, let's take it up a little bit, honey. There's all kinds of things to do in Tennessee, but next time, let's take the pink Cadillac. Call or click for your free Tennessee vacation guide. At a time when sports are heading in the wrong direction, the NAIA is changing the culture of sport. Through the Champions of Character program, our college students are learning character traits that change behaviors. And they're bringing the message to coaches, parents, and teams nationwide. 
Visit NAIA.org and learn how your team can become champions of character. Life is hectic. Playtime shouldn't be. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let the pace move you. Hardin County, Tennessee. From golfing to water sports to museums, Hardin County has it all. Come to a place where Southern hospitality is more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. For more information about Hardin County, call 1-800-552-FUNN. That's 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. Uh, welcome back. A big fourth down situation. Fourth and two for Sioux Falls. They are going for it. Cavender in the shotgun. He's going to call his own number, and he's not going to get it. Not even close. He gets stacked up behind the line of scrimmage, and Carroll will take over on downs. And what a huge play by that stingy Carroll defense. Yeah, the defensive coordinator is also the head coach, Mike Van Deese. He's a guy that knows defense. He knows what the strength of this team is, and they know that Chad Cavender on the other side for Sioux Falls is the strength. They spread it out. Well, as soon as he got the football and started migrating to the left, everyone was there swarming like killer bees, nothing doing. Big play on defense for Carroll. So now with an 11-point lead and the ball and 13-33 on the clock, I think we're going to get a healthy dose of number 20 in white or white and brown. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Barnett under center. And the ball's on the ground, and he just has to fall on it. Again, a bad exchange between the center and Barnett and We've had several of those this afternoon, and it's just been a difficult uh, difficult situation uh, for the quarterbacks and the running backs, uh, but one guy who's not had a problem is uh, is Gabe Lee. Yeah, Gabe has hold, held that ball, you know, I told you he's probably on a coach to be proud of him. Really covered up that ball, all six points of it. The quarterbacks have had trouble with it, receivers, but, but not Gabe. He's held onto it. He's been a, a rock of strength for that team. Josh Harnett to Gabe Lee, and nowhere for him to go. First man there was number 91, Mike Hartley, and then number 75 also there. And that's going to back him back to the 40. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, we know the defensive line, line of that Sioux Falls defense is their strength, and those guys are aggressive. They play hard. They get after it, and, uh, you know, that's what they have to do. But, but right now, offensively is what needs to happen. Sioux Falls offense needs to get involved in the game to, to help out that defense. A must stop here for the Cougars' defense. Clock continues to run, approaching 12 minutes to go in the game. Another... Almost double snap. They hand it off to Lee. He loses two. And Carroll will be forced to punt. It's been amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a game where there's been two, three, or four almost double snaps because of not being able to uh, get a handle on the ball. Yeah, that's the uh, lubrication of that uh, substance that combines dirt and water. Same thing mud. again. Yeah, it's just very difficult to get your hands around it. You know, and the guys don't have on gloves. The quarterbacks are, are barehanded. It's very tough to hold on to that pick skin. Erickson back to receiving punt, sitting at his own 22. A low punt, a low snap, and smothered at the 22, and a huge break for Sioux Falls. Theory couldn't get a hold on it, and Sioux Falls is going to take over at the Carroll 22-yard line. Another crucial, crucial play with 11.24 to go. Well, we just talked about the uh, old cow skin. Check that, not big skin, cow skin. Very tough to hold on to with the mud. You know, as, as a punter, when they get the football, it already was a low snap, didn't have a chance in there. He, he didn't really show the athletic ability of, of, of a running back. On well, you saw him look up, yeah. and when he saw the whole <laughs> The whole cavalcade. Here in headlights, uh, yeah. Yeah, Sioux Falls, there was no way he was getting it off. So now, he's muddy. Chad Cavender <laughs> has to get his team into the end zone, and they take over the 22. Cavender back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. He's got a man open, and it is dropped by Anderson, and it was nearly picked off, and Anderson still uh, should have made the catch because nobody touched it. 
nobody touched him. And that time, Chad Cavender, he, he's been getting pressure because that time he had a few guys wide open. That time, number eight, seven, Robert Curvin was wide open down the field. There was an opportunity there, but but again, with the weather the way it is, it's just tough. It's tough to get the passing game going, especially when you haven't had it going all game. Second down and ten for the Cougars. Three wideouts to the near side. Keep an eye on number 41, Erickson. He is Cavender's go-to guy. Cavender calling his own number. And he's going to be hit all the way back at the 25. He will lose a couple of yards. So that'll bring up a third down and 12 now. Well, I just saw a tremendous play by number 22 for the Carroll defense, Nick Milo Dragovic. You know, they call him Milo. This guy has been playing all over the football field today, and that time he had his eyes on Chad Cavender from the time that he made that play action. He didn't buy into it at all. Just a tremendous job coming up, being aggressive, and that's why the coach said he's the best cornerback in college football he's ever played with. He loves that guy. Big Nick. Good play. If you're a little confused, there are two number 22s on the field. Milo Dragovich plays defense in Prospery, uh, returns kicks and plays on the offensive side. So there you go. Cavender back to pass on third down. He has a man wide open. Sippy. And he's going to be wrapped up at the 17. And Simple will be about five yards short of the first down and you would have to think that this is uh it's go time i mean you don't you don't kick a field goal here 100 percent. you know it would only make it an eight point game plus a, a field goal in in these conditions are no gimmicks yeah right now you know you got to look over you know number 81 josiah fence he's a senior he's a big time playmaker you got to get guys involved in the game that want to make the play right now all right here we go fourth down Cavender back to pass all kinds of time. He has a man wide open completed to Erickson down at the 10 and that's going to be enough for a Sioux Falls first down. Well, the other playmaker on that team, number 41, Trey Erickson, another senior, there to make a play. He caught the ball. See how he caught it? Baskets down, making the grab. Smart adjustment. Way to make the biggest play of the day here in this championship game. They really needed that first down. And give credit to, to Cavender that when they needed a play, he got it done. Um, putting the rain out of his mind and throwing a very nice ball out to Erickson. So now they can technically get a first down about a half yard short of the goal line. So essentially it's first down and goal. Cavender keeps it. And he's gonna go down all the way back at the 20. Sacked back there by number 96, Mike Ogren. And a loss of nearly 10 yards on the play. Yeah, I thought that decision was not the best one for Chad Cavender. You know, when you're trying to get so close, every yard is so crucial. You know, to do the play action, take him away from line of scrimmage, back away from the ball, is very difficult. And right now, since he can't use his wiggle, that's the thing that Mud does. It doesn't, he is a wiggle, make a guy miss, but those plays don't work in the Mud because every guy is equal, and that puts him at a real disadvantage. So second down and 19. A huge loss for Sioux Falls on first down. Cavender. Back to pass, and they're going to run the tight end screen to Fitzroy, and he got around a couple of guys, couldn't elude the others, and a short gain on the play, and you can see that he just does not have the, uh, after being injured in the first half, that he is limping now after that play and doesn't have... Uh, what he normally has, the speed and the elusiveness. Yeah, when you're in the mud and it's raining, your pants get really soggy and soppy and wet, and it might add about five or six pounds on you, and when you're a tight end, you're not already the fastest guy in the world anyway. With that extra little six, seven pounds plus getting banged up, it's tough to break away. Defensively, good job by uh, Milo again, number 22, coming up and sort of slowing down the tight end. The clock is starting to be a factor as we approach seven and a half minutes. Cavender back to pass. Still looking, still looking, and has to throw it away. Nobody was open. Great coverage downfield and in the end zone by the Carroll defensive back. So now I think you have to kick a field goal to cut the lead to eight. But we'll see what uh, Coach DeBoer decides to do. 
I don't know if a field goal is really an option in this weather, you know, with the kicking. I mean, you can try one, but it, it's been tough, you know, kicking the football. And, it, and this isn't a short field goal. You know, I, I don't know. You might want to try to go for it and get the ball downfield and play some defense. Well, they are. They have brought the field goal unit onto the field, and this would be a 34-yard attempt for Matt Lindgren, the Sioux Falls kicker. A must-make for sure. And it's blocked at the line of scrimmage. Never had a chance. And it's covered at the four. And a huge stop after the botched punt. Sioux Falls had great field position. And they could do absolutely nothing with it. Well, it was great penetration on the inside of that play. Defensive lineman driving back the guys up front. You know, the first kick that, that he had earlier, he kicked with sort of low trajectory. So that one did, didn't surprise me. That one was also low. It's tough to get the kicks up in the air in the mud, and this, this is a tough situation for, for Matt. That kick was blocked by number 48, Nick Gilchrist. And so now Carroll will take over at their own four with 7-19 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And uh, it's starting to feel like they they have that grasp around that NAIA trophy. If they can uh, get two or three first downs, uh, this thing is going to be over. Well, it's a little premature for that. Seven minutes left. It's still plenty of time left. Gabe Lee straight up the middle. Gets maybe nine yards on the carry. You know, one thing that's been consistent is that guy, Gabe, he has been running tremendously well all game long. Shoulder square, getting downfield. He's just wearing on his defense, and that's why he's over the century mark for this game, rushing the football. There is a man down on the field for uh, Sioux Falls, linebacker Nate Everett. He is up and being helped off. But Carroll right now wants to chew up the clock. I would be very surprised if you see them throw a pass at all in this drive. Well, I said I'd be thinking the same thing, and that's why from a defensive perspective, the coordinator, Chuck Morrell, this is the time, if any, to be aggressive and bring your safeties and bring those guys, you know, 28, Trevor Holloman, bring those guys up inside, blitz, send the guys. Number 33, Rob Tip made some plays in the first half. This is the time where you want to get those guys involved and get them up to the line of scrimmage and force them to throw the ball, force them to throw it, and take your chance because you need the ball back. So now the clock continues to run under seven minutes to play. Barnett under center. And he hands it off to Lee. Lee along the left side trying to run for the first down. We'll see where they mark the uh, ball out. He only needed a yard. But every first down adds about a minute and a half to two minutes onto the drive. So... So I was saying three or four first downs, and uh, Sioux Falls is going to be in a world of hurt. Yeah, I said right now that the mud factor does play a role. You know, if you can get and hit a running back or do something in the backfield, you know, it's tough for people to hold on to the football. You know, those kind of things factor in. And when you look at this game and say it's an 11-point game, you know, in today's football, you know, you get out there and make a play, something beautiful can happen. They need to have the defense to have a shot. They need to have a stop right here, third down and a half a yard. Lee in the I formation. He gets the call again. He's stacked up in the line of scrimmage, and he's going to lose a full yard all the way back to the 12. So now Carroll will punt, and that was a huge, and I mean huge, stop for Sioux Falls. That was huge, and the defense for Sioux Falls has been playing well enough to be successful all game. They've been playing for the national championship up front. Defensive linemen really getting after it, making plays physical up front making it tough for, to, to get Gabe, who's been dominating, a chance to make the crucial one yard, and I'm just excited about that. But now offensively, Sioux Falls has to do something. you, you got to get something going here. Erickson standing back at his 44. Theory nearly had it blocked, got it away. Erickson takes it, eludes one tackler, gets inside Carroll territory, but just at the 49. So now that's where Sioux Falls will take over. Let's set the stage with... 5.03 to play here in the fourth quarter. Down 11. Sioux Falls with the ball. And still, as you said, now that they made a stop, 
still with a chance to win this ball game. Yeah, unfortunately for this game, Sioux Falls, who, who averages 46 points a game, 46 points a game. Right now you see six on the scoreboard. They don't have a true identity yet offensively, and that's going to be tough for them. But right now, the only plays they had was big-time receivers. Go to your receivers now and make a play. All right, well, we'll find out they're going to do that when we come back. We're late in the fourth here in Savannah. Public Relations Director for the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. We are here in the magnificent six million dollar municipal auditorium of Kansas City, Missouri tonight. At a time when sports are heading in the wrong direction, the NAIA is changing the culture of sport. Through the Champions of Character program, our college students are learning character traits that change behaviors. And they're bringing the message to coaches, parents, and teams nationwide. Visit NAIA.org and learn how your team can become Champions of Character. I played a lot of stages over the years, but there's one I never get tired of that's set for a great time, day or night, Tennessee. There's no end to the beauty, music, and adventure starring in Tennessee. For an unforgettable vacation or weekend getaway any time of the year, we've got the perfect stage for you. Uh, let's take it up a little bit, honey. There's all kinds of things to do in Tennessee, but next time, let's take the pink Cadillac. Call or click for your free Tennessee vacation guide. We're back in Hardin County, Savannah, Tennessee, 17-6. Carroll on top in this NAIA National Championship game. Sioux Falls has the ball back. Cavender trying to find somewhere to go, and instead of throwing it away, he takes a near 10-yard loss, and not something he needed to do right there. As we go under the five-minute, Sioux Falls trails by 11, and we were talking about it at the break running those plays the misdirection that's not working in these type of conditions no you cannot take the quarterback and go play action pass or do anything to boot him away from the line of scrimmage backwards you know you got to keep things coming downhill and if he has to be in the shotgun and get the ball to think you got to do it and you have to give your receiver a chance to make a play take a shot downfield you might get a pass interference you might get something but you got to take a shot second down 18 wide receiver screen to erickson and nowhere for him to go. He tries to get out of bounds, and he does. But I believe he actually lost a yard on the play. But at least he stopped the clock. This offense has been just too much, you know, southeast, south and east. You know, it's like north and south. Excuse me. It's like you want your offense to be north and south. You know what I mean? Not east and west. This side-to-side -side offense has not been successful all game. And, again, they're playing against the best defense in the conference. This is a tremendous defense. You cannot have success offensively if you're not taking shots downfield. I think you need to throw the ball to Alex Anderson, number nine. Give him a shot. And 87, Robert Curvin hasn't been catching the ball the last two times, but you got to take shots downfield with these big receivers. So third down and 19 for the Cougars with 413 left here in the game. Cavender back to pass. Still looking. Still looking. And just throws it away. He had a man down there, but was double covered. So in that series, they lose nine yards, and they 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 have two t two timeouts left. But third down and 19. I don't know if you want to go for it from your own 40-yard uh, line. No, you uh, you don't really have too many plays in your playbook. All you can do is just just line the guys up and just send everybody on seam routes and just hope you catch a coverage that you can find a weakness and send one guy in the middle of the field with an option route uh, in the middle of the field. But you got to take a shot. And no matter what, there has been time in the pocket, you know, for Chad to run to throw the football. He's been getting out into the pocket, hasn't had to. Right now, you got he has to hang in the pocket, he has to stand, sit there, and take a shot downfield. Well, they're going for it. Fourth down and 19, three wide receivers. Cavender, straight back to pass. Down the near side, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's completed. It's completed to number 83, John Bryan, on fourth and 19. They must have been listening to you. 
move the chains, the drive continues. This is exactly what you have to do and what you should have been doing a few series ago. But give your receiver the chance to make a play. You guys are 46 points a game for a reason. That time, tremendous throw, tremendous grab. Catch me over the backside, outside shoulder. Nice strike delivered, a crucial down. So now first down at 10. Drive continues. And their flag comes down. And it probably, in all likelihood, will be on Carroll. So if somehow Sioux Falls can come back and win this game, you're going to pinpoint. You're going to pinpoint that fourth down and 19 as the key play in the game. The freshman from Watertown, South Dakota, John Ryan, with the big fourth down conversion. Cavender on the day, obviously. Holding number 22 of the defense, holding an eligible pass receiver, 10 yards, automatic first down. This is not. The, the way he wanted his college career to end, but uh, he still has a, a chance to, to make it right. You know, this opportunity out here, you know, obviously from an offensive perspective, you got to take shots downfield in order to score points. That's just how it is. And defensively, you know, the guys have been playing so strong, stopping the run. I think now they're, they're a little bit on their heels right now because they don't know what's going to happen. Cavender's going to keep it inside the 20. Again, it may be four, and they've got to have the hurry up going as the clock continues to run. 335 and counting here in the fourth. Sioux Falls briefly held the lead at 6-3 in the third quarter. But Carroll came right back with two touchdowns of their own, and that's where we sit right now. Down the near side, and the ball floated, kind of slipped out of the hands of Cavender and falls incomplete. But again, that's the right idea. You know, taking the shot downfield. This time what Chad did was good. He didn't try to move and use his feet. He stood there in the pocket. He tried to deliver a strike. Ball got a little bit far, far left. Might have slipped out of his hand. But that's the right kind of thing you got to do. You must get the ball downfield without letting the time run off the clock. And that's what the passing game does. I, I just saw, though, number 81, Josiah Fitzroy again, the tight end. Down the middle of the field might be a chance to take a shot to him in these last few plays. So third down and seven. Keep an eye on number 81. He's at the end of the line on the near side. Cavender, back to pass, plenty of time. He's got a man wide open, Erickson, completed. At the 13 and he pulls several tacklers down to the 10, another first down. And it, it'll be first down and goal for Sioux Falls with 3.06 to go here in the game. You know, and Trey Erickson has been a guy consistent there. You know, early in the game, he got a lot of punt, punt, return, get away from him a little bit. But besides that, he's been just a strong, consistent player, senior, making big plays when they need it most, converted big fourth down. Trey Erickson, number 41, has just really given a great effort out here to help his team. Clock starts. Cavender stays on his feet. Lost one. Well out of bounds as he has Erickson over there, and he's lucky that he didn't go down and lose 20 to 30 seconds off the clock. Yeah, you know, anytime, you know, when Cavender is going away, he got his little his feet slipped up under, underneath his offensive lineman. But you see that mud really factoring in. It's tough. Nobody on the on the other side of football actually touched him. At that time, it was it was the mud and, 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 and slickness and everything else. That's That's another tough opponent to play against. So second down and goal. The ball sitting right at the 10-yard line. 2.52 is all that stands between Carroll College and a fifth national championship in the last six years. Cavender into the end zone. Nearly intercepted, intended for Curvin, and he was well covered out there, and uh, really no shot at completing that one. And Chad Cavender, he, he's, I'm looking at his hands, and I'm seeing him jog off, and his hands are slick, and they're messy, and, and I'm surprised, you know, he doesn't have a little towel or something to dry off, or maybe he could change his shirt, you know, do something. It's tough, you know, try to put the ball in the right spot when you can't grip it. It's hard enough as is to make a great throw, even when your hands are dry. And so it, it's really tough for him, and, and he's trying to battle through, but this is very difficult. Got to put that ball up there for his receivers to have a chance. Cavender having a rough day, 12 for 25 for only a buck 16. Two falls, only two for 14 today, converting on third down. Cavender to the near side. He's got a man out there. Oh, and just tipped 
great defense by number 41 for Carroll. That's Matt Gordon. Erickson was open, but it was tipped away just at the last moment. That was a saving grace, number 41, Matt Gordon. You know, he's a guy that's 6'1", 224, big guy. You know, they say he's big, but also can move and cover. And that was one time where he saved it because Trey had, had the little step on him, was going to score a touchdown and make this game very reasonable. So, great play. So now Kalen DeBoer has decided to send Lindgren on to attempt a 26-yard field goal. This would cut it to eight. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So when it was needed, Lindgren is able to put it through. So now, with 2.37 to go here in the fourth quarter, Sioux Falls trails only by eight with two timeouts remaining. I, I thought that was a good decision that time to, to go and make sure you get the points. And uh, we'll see if that works out in, in this next series. All right, we got 2.37 to go to crown a national champion. We'll be back. Hardin County is one of the fastest growing counties in Tennessee. Companies like Tenneco have chosen to operate in Hardin County because of offerings such as above par educational programs, delivery to 76% of the U.S. market within one day, and a pro-business climate created by the local governments. These are just a few of the reasons Hardin County is a wonderful place to call home. To find out more about Hardin County, call Team Hardin County at 1-800-552-3866. Hardin County, Tennessee. Let the pace move you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bill Rosenstater speaking, Public Relations Director for the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. We are here in the magnificent $6 million municipal auditorium of Kansas City, Missouri tonight. At a time when sports are heading in the wrong direction, the NAIA is changing the culture of sport. Through the Champions of Character program, our college students are learning character traits that change behaviors. And they're bringing the message to coaches, parents, and teams nationwide. Visit NAIA.org and learn how your team can become Champions of Character. TV's Football Nation, the NAIA National Championship, has been brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Hear what you've been missing on Sirius, the best radio on radio. And by Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. We are back. Sioux Falls is set up for a, an attempt at an onside kick. Jordan Turner has it lined up at the 30, and Carroll has the hand team in there, and it actually hits a Sioux Falls player early no flag comes in Carroll recovers it anyway and so the onside kick unsuccessful and Carroll will take over at the 32 of Sioux Falls good bad decision well you have really had no choice and the way the game's been going now you know to kick that ball to them you know deep you know it hasn't been too much success they tried to go for it you know 235 and you know it's just unfortunate when the onside doesn't work if it works you're a hero if it doesn't you wish you did something different. So now Sioux Falls has two timeouts and 2.35 to go here in the fourth. They need a stop, and they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So Gabe Lee back in at tailback. And Barnett under center. Lee gets the call, and he's going to be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. The first man there was Rob Tiff. And immediately, Sioux Falls will call their second timeout of this half. And that's the, that's the right decision. You know, right now, you know, you have to be aggressive against the run. If you're going to get beat, let them beat you with the pass. Defensive coordinator Chuck Morrell, he has probably about uh, 50 blitzes in his package. Here's a good chance to pull some out and have fun in the national championship to get the ball back for your team. And while we have a minute, we certainly want to send out uh, all of our thank yous uh, from CSTV to uh, uh, the NAIA for one. They've been fantastic. Uh, David Long locally here. Uh, heads up a, a great team, Hardin County, as they like to call themselves, and uh, has put this, this game on for 12 years. Uh, the Pickwick County State Park that uh, uh, put us up and had that great uh, 
uh, Great banquet hotel. last night. And uh, so just thank you to everybody. We certainly do appreciate it. And uh, we love coming here each and every year. And hopefully uh, we'll be back next year. And uh, chances are one of these two teams will be as well. <laughs> I, I would think there's a good probability that happens. So now back to action. Second down and 10 for Carroll. Trying to milk the clock. And the ball's on the ground. And Barnett can do nothing but just fall on it at the 35. And just like that, Sioux Falls calls their final timeout of this half. It'll bring up a third down and about 12 or 13. And so they need to stop here. Obviously, uh, they're out of field goal range in this conditions. And so they would get the ball back. If I'm doing my math with approximately uh, maybe a buck 40. <laughs> yeah, well, right right there. Uh, buck 40, buck 45 left in the game uh, to go the length of the field. Well, anything's possible. And I said, when you look and wonder how bad this weather is, when you see the quarterback, number 13, John Barnett, fumble the ball in a situation where you know he knows to hold on to the football, this is a national championship. Both of these teams are undefeated. They're tremendous athletes, tremendous teams. And so this should let you know, if you're watching this out in TV land, how bad this weather is. It's extremely tough to hold on to the football. And John Barnett just fumbled the ball, and he was over there kicking himself and looking to the sideline like, I know, I know. It's tough to hold on to it. Hats off to Gabe Lee, though. He's been the guy that's held up to that ball and been very, very, very stout with his ball security. And Barnett now up to the line of scrimmage. 225. I would be shocked, shocked if they throw the football here. The very tentative handoff to Lee, and he was down well before the ball came out at the 32. So now the clock will run, and... Carroll will let the clock go all the way down before in all likelihood calling a timeout of their own and probably punting to try and uh, pin Sioux Falls deep. Yeah, want to try to pin them deep in. With that number one defense in the conference, you have to feel good about your chances pinning them deep and forcing them to go the length of the field plus a two-point conversion to just tie the game up. But that time on that run, actually Gabe Lee was a step away from actually breaking that one too, so... Uh, way to dodge a bullet, Sioux Fall defense. You know, you see uh, Mike Van Deese there, and, and what a run he has had at Carroll College. When you think about it, uh, nine years, uh, four national championships, maybe a fifth uh, here today. Uh, yeah. and, and every year people say somebody's going to come from a bigger school, a bigger institution, and he continues to stay because he loves – uh, the NAIA environment, uh, what it stands for, and uh, what his college is able to accomplish each and every year. Yeah, we talked to him. He said, you know, we had a great run of success, you know, being for the last five championships. But he said, this team that's here now, this is a new group. This is a new team. There's only five players from their last title game. These guys, this is their first experience. And so sometimes you sort of lump all those championships together when you start winning them so many. But he said, for each and every player that's on this team, this is a unique experience. They're excited and they're so pleased to be in most of their first national championship game. So it means a lot to him, and uh, he just built a tremendous program. So now 138 remaining after the timeout by Carroll. They are going to punt. Now, remember the last punt, a bad snap, and uh, they were smothered. So Sioux Falls is going to bring the house. In theory, just wants to get this one away. Snap is good, and he does just get it away. It lands at the 10 and covered at the 4. Perfectly executed for Carroll College. And I believe there is a flag down on the play. And we'll see what the call is. But there is no flag on the play. Okay, after all, after <laughs> the flag's in the front. Um, so the ball is at the four. So now Sioux Falls in a minute and a half with no timeouts remaining must go 96 yards and get a two-point conversion to tie this game. That's not going to be an easy test. Not going to be easy. Did you, did you think that Coach Mike Van Deese thought there was a penalty in that last play? He definitely had some words for the for – the, uh, referees and that lets you know how important this is the national championship there is no other game next week this is it and it's so important in both these teams just tremendous tremendous teams 
No, you got to give your hat off to both teams. Kalen DeBoer has brought his uh, uh, his team in here and uh, put his 27 game win streak on the line against Carroll, and that's the longest in the country right now. Gavin, excuse me, excuse me, Gavin Durr, incomplete, second down at 10, and right now it's time for our serious player of the game, and uh, no shock here, Gabe Lee, uh, an outstanding day, 34 for 116, and those two touchdowns that both came in the third quarter that really distanced Carroll from Sioux Falls in this ball game. Yeah, th this wonderful young man has been a, was a backup to start the season out, has had the hot hand late, and he did a tremendous job all game long. Shoulder square, running inside, ball security. Nice running back. Over the middle, complete. Ooh. What a hit. And they're saying now incomplete. It's Erickson had it, and he was just rocked by Cody Zimmerman. You know, you, you try to get the ball, you know, to your playmakers. That time defensively, Cody was in great position. He's a senior. He's a guy that has speed. They said he's like a linebacker with speed back in that secondary position. And now he stepped up and made as big a defensive play as there's been so far. And what a perfect form tackle. Led with the shoulder. Nothing dirty about it. And separated the ball from Erickson. So now third down and 10. The ball resting on the four of Buck 19 remaining. Sioux Falls down to their final couple of plays in this ball game. Kavanaugh back to pass. Throwing it to the near side. He's got a man out there and double covered, and that one falls incomplete. He'll bring up fourth down to 10. So the crowd on the far side, the faithful that have come all the way from the Northwest. Montana and, and all parts in between can feel this national title within their grasp. Fourth and ten. Two falls down to their final play. On this one, you know, you got to give your wide receiver a chance. You know, number nine, Alex Anderson, the guy that made the big play early, the freshman. You got to give him a shot. He's been doing tremendous. Josiah Fitzroy, of course, the senior, and number 41, Trey Erickson. You got to go to those guys. They've been the ones making plays all game. Kavanaugh back to pass. Over the middle, he's got a man, the ball pops up in the air, falls incomplete, and that's going to do it. The celebration commences on the far sidelines as Carroll realizes that they are just about to do it again. A stellar defensive effort this afternoon. In really bad weather, they were able to score 14 points in the third quarter, and that has proven to be the difference. Yeah, on that last play, you know, Trey Erickson ran an option route towards the middle of the field. You know, Chad had a chance to release a good ball, good delivery on the ball, try to get in there with Trey. You know, tough to make that gra grab in traffic, popped up in the air, and, and that's just what you want to see if you're a, a Carroll, Carroll College defensively. Tremendous effort shutting down this offense. And uh, Barnett limps onto the field. He uh, hurt himself a couple of, of series ago, and they will call time a quick out. timeout as the Carol. play clock was under five. But uh, Mike Van Dees just got the uh, dumped on, but I don't know if it feels any different than <laughs> just the rest normal. of the game. Yeah, just some ice in it. But uh, obviously the smiles uh, have started, and... Uh, you know, he said last night that uh, even though they've won several times and they and they uh, come here a lot, that every year is a different year, a different type of feeling, and and it's always hard when you have this this playoff system, and that's what's great about every other level of football except Division One, yeah. that you have a playoff, you play it on the field, you've got uh, you know you play for four weeks, and you just, you decide a winner, and, and that's who's the best. So. Um, this is the way it should be. Last night, Appalachian State wins the Division I AA. And today, Carroll College back on top of the NAIA world. So probably one or two more plays. They will kneel down. And that's going to do it. Carroll College, every time they've come here, to Savannah, Tennessee, to Hardin County, 
they have left with a victory. 5-0. and oh. They are starting to love Tennessee. <laughs> you see the commercials. Come visit Tennessee. They would love to. You know, also, we spent time with the team as a whole, and, and both teams, but in particular, you know, Carroll College, how they carried themselves at the hotel. We had a chance to spend time with them, be around the assistant coaches. Just as an overall team, those guys have just done, been tremendous. And they're just, they just deserve to be national champions. And hats off to Carroll College, the NAIA national champions. And the celebration now is official. It was a muddy day. It was an ugly day. But Carroll College was able to get it done. Coach Mike Van Deest, for the fifth time in the last six years, his Carroll College Fighting Saints are the NAIA National Champions. You know, the feeling that you have after you win a national championship, there's nothing like it. You know, hats off as well. Sioux Falls, tremendous season. Not to be discredited, they were number one in the country, had a prolific offense, but today in the mud, their offensive productivity was muted, and they couldn't get it done. And you just got to give credit where credit's due. Carroll College got it done defensively, but what I was really impressed with was that offensively, they responded with the elements. They responded by running the ball. Offensively, offensive coordinator Nick Howlett adapted to the elements. John Barnett, the quarterback, made the simple plays. And number 20, Gabe Lee, a backup running back, stepped up big in this game and provided the, the boost to get them over the top. And your offensive player of the game, Gabe Lee, defensive player of the game, is voted here on Kevin. And uh, and what a what a performance! And when you talk about a dynasty, um, you would have to consider Carroll College uh, just that a dynasty. Five out of six years last year, uh, losing in the quarterfinals, um, but a, just a, a stellar performance in uh, adverse conditions. You know, and we, when we talked to Coach uh, Mike Van Dees, he said he talked about last year. You know, when they got put out in the quarterfinals, he said when the game ended, it, it, it was like they didn't know what to do. They, they haven't experienced not going to the championship in so long. And so for them, the players to a man took it upon themselves to get back to this championship game and win it. And they came, they did, they showed, and they're on top of the football world in the NAI. Well, Roland, uh, this is the end of our year, and it was a lot of fun, pal. And uh, hopefully we can do it all over again next year. Oh, what a great way to end it, man. I had a great time with you, Coach. I said a lot of fun. Hopefully people uh, laughed and chuckled a few times during our game. And uh, I just I just think it's, it's just exciting to see young kids have a chance to win a title. And it means so much. All right. Once again, our final score, Carroll College 17, Sioux Falls 9. For Roland Williams and our entire CSTV crew, I'm Jonathan Coachman. For more, log on to CSTV.com, the ultimate destination for scores, news, highlights, and analysis. This has been a presentation of CSTV, the 24-hour college sports network from CBS Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, Carroll College for the fifth time in six years, your 2007 NAIA National Champions. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy holidays. Take care. We'll see you soon. The finest leather boots are at Big Joe's Boots.